Hello. Hello. <laughs> Welcome. Oh. <laughs> to session number 22 of Outlander's Guide to Lidaria. <laughs> Hi. Hello. Um, I think it, it takes a few seconds for the stream to actually start once I press the button. So, um, I don't think uh, your scream came through, but I definitely heard it through through the through the, the door. <laughs> yeah, no, that's uh, fine. Thank you, that cracked me up. <clears throat> All right, so today Austin will not be able to join us, um, and Sid is not here, but only for the first hour, so um, we will be hearing from him soon. Um, the the thing is that oh, Dennis, thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Dennis. In six months, <laughs> six months. Six months, hype. Uh, the thing is uh, that today it is Sid's turn to do a recap. Um, so I have got his his recap that he wrote, and I will be the one reading it. So um, get comfortable, grab some popcorn, and uh, uh, let's find out what happened uh, last session. So, last time, we find our group on the small cargo ship, the Broken Wing, as a group of red beaks soar towards them from the air. Through the collaboration between Talix and Pip, three pacified birds fly onwards, while the crew and passengers prepare to struggle against the rest. A small mechanical winged cat, silhouetted by the sun, also approaches the vessel, but he is eventually grappled by the rat-turned-imp-turned-squid, Squeak. Talix manages to halt one of the red beaks with an improvised lasso and is shocked by Brooke's decision to slice it dead. While the party is distracted by the red beaks arriving from the east, a raft with several Etarova stealthily neighbors the ship and they all climb aboard. Nin, the daughter of the boat's captain, Theodomer, is knocked unconscious by one of the Etarava, and in retaliation, Brook and Vasilian pierce them until death. Talix tackles one of the Etarava into the water, and Tekka is struck unconscious by the teen leader of the Etarava group. After further fighting, the Etarava realize the danger they're in and grab onto the Redbeak's talons as a means of escape. Talix and Brooke bring an injured Redbeak on board, and Talix learns that the Atarava are nomadic people that are assigned a, re a Redbeak at birth, and can build some innate connection with them. After the encounter, the group learns that the unconscious Nind, Theodmer, and Tekka had all met the same elf person by the tree of Vakanath, similar to the sketches that Talix and Alien made after their visions. Eventually, the boat anchors by the city of Simlielon, recognized by its four clusters of floating towers unaffected by wind and gravity. Oh. I... Where is it? Here it is. We'll give Sid a little... Uh, inspiration die. What do we call this one? Uh, late inspiration. Because <laughs> he will be late. <laughs> Late inspiration. Okay. Very well. So, um, why don't we bring. Uh, no, not that one. <laughs> this one. Oh, spoilers. <laughs> why don't Everyone, we bring in. Write that down. Ah! <laughs> it. Screenshot it and analyze it. I <laughs> Her horse takes the stream down. <laughs> <laughs> here's uh, here's a simlielon. Ah, uh, <laughs> Here is a uh, the this largest. <laughs> here is the largest uh, city. Um, in all of the Zasberg Peninsula, built by colonists. Uh, 
as the as the broken wing reaches uh, all the way up. Oh, thank you, Jason. Ah, <laughs> oh, you guys. Um, as the broken wing reaches all the way up uh, um, the lake and then uh, uh, coasts along until it reaches the port, uh, uh, you step foot into just the city as you get closer and as you uh, hop off the boat it is just massive and breathtaking it's it's overwhelming there's just so much to see and you feel so small compared to the number and size of these buildings there's this instinct uh, where every time one of the towers floating above your heads is uh, uh, ever so slightly, is slightly rotating in place or tilting ever so slightly to one side, where you just uh, you almost you almost flinch whenever you notice this, so just expecting something massive to fall over you. Um, but there they say. Get used to it. <laughs> yes. Um, I. I think I vaguely remember one of you uh, offering to help with uh, um, unloading the cargo of the ship. Um, we all kind of did. Okay. Well, I don't know <coughs> yeah. It's okay, Pontifex is excused. <laughs> um, and yeah, okay. You will uh, assist the Vizillion, um with emptying the ship, which it takes very little time when it's not to just one person handling it. Um, and, well, what would you like to do? <laughs> um, oh, Matt! So we're about to say thank goodbye you. To, the, to the crew, right? Um, yeah. If you're going to leave the port, then uh, you will be leaving them behind. It seems like they, they've got just some uh, some papers to take care of, and they're gonna be staying here for for a little while, at least another half an hour before they'll be heading anywhere. Well, Talix at least wants to just kind of follow up with them after everything, because we never really talked to them after the after the battle. Well, I guess we we did for a brief minute, but yeah, there was a small conversation about uh, well the. Um... Uh, about their dream. Their and Tekka's vision, yeah. Right. I don't know. Uh, Tal Talix just wants to talk to Vasilian real quick. Not Vasilian. What? What's her name? Uh, the girl? Oh. The, the younger one? Yeah. Nind. Yeah, yeah. Nind. Uh, yeah. It just seems weird to leave without saying goodbye. So. Um, okay. Shh. <clears throat> She has been cl uh, glancing at your group uh, uh, as they were helping uh, with the cargo, um, but uh, um, mainly she was she was working with her father on the ship, uh, um, bringing it to its. Uh, uh, oh, sorry, uh, just anchoring it down, uh, uh, and <clears throat> well, she seems a little distracted. Hmm. Uh, but if you are to approach, her attention just, like, snaps to you. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'll just... Yeah. Um, how are you How are you holding up? I know we haven't really had a chance to talk much after that whole incident. I'm actually doing fine. Um, look, I barely have... Barely just a scar left. She's, like, holding up her arm to show you. Okay, well, that's good. Um... <clears throat> I think I'm gonna try to do what I can to maybe make this trek a little bit perilous... a little bit less perilous for you. What do you mean? How so? Well... I want to try to talk to these people and maybe learn a bit and see if there's a way we can negotiate with them. The bird people? Yeah. You deal with them often. 
Yeah. Well, it's never been this bad. But, um... I mean, uh, according to Father, there is really no negotiating with them. People have tried. They're just... so aggressive. Well... I haven't tried yet. So that's what I'm gonna do. Um... Her eyes just widen a little bit in 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 uh, in shock, but also just uh, um, she she's impressed by by your determination. Um, and after a moment, she just she nods excitedly and says, "I think you might, well, you might stand a chance, but uh, but do be careful." Yeah. Oh uh, sure. Um. it <laughs> oh no i cut out i guess that's it um just be well and uh if you ever do take up to adventure i suppose maybe you could uh maybe you've got the spirit for it after all <laughs> i think if um, you feel that uh that urge you should just do it set out on, set out on your own Her, uh, her eyes uh, just, for a moment, you see that she's looking in the direction of her father, almost like checking that he's not too close, he's not uh, hearing this. Um, again, she nods, this time with a, a little bit less determination. Um, she nervously rubs her hands, uh, um, and then nods again, but this time a little bit, uh, with a bit more conviction. And she says, yeah, yeah, okay, I'll... Yeah, um, I'm going to do it. I'm not going to be stuck in this life of just going up and down the river, up and down day after day. I'm, I'm gonna do something. I'm gonna set off. I, I have your, um, I have your card. Um, I can write to you and I'll, I'll tell you how it goes. I eagerly await your stories. <laughs> oh, um. Um, how long are you going to stay in Simlielon? At least a day, right? Oh, uh, yeah, I think we're planning on staying here for a while. Uh, okay, the there professor is... professor wants to study some things. Do you have a place to stay? Oh, uh, not yet, no. You know a place? Well, I know a place that you should avoid. And oh. you see that this time she glances towards the direction of your group. Um... It seems their attention uh, <clears throat> is uh, drawn uh, to Tekka, um, as as she says. Uh, there's this one in that. Uh, um, well, we've stayed there a few times, and uh, the guy is all right, but he, well, he just really dislikes. Uh, you know, he's rude. Unless okay, you're an elf. Oh, uh, so well, whatever you do, don't oh, stay at the Baron Badger. <laughs> what a name. Okay. Thank you. Well. Until we meet again. Yeah. Yeah. Alright. And she's like... Not... Turning away? Um... Hmm... Uh, okay, I should go. Crap. Bye. Um, oh. <laughs> and All she right. she awkwardly Bye. waves, uh, but then she uh, yeah she turns her attention back uh, uh, towards her father and <laughs> Dennis <laughs> and joins with him. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, learned something at least. What was that? 
Well, was what? I just wanted to say goodbye. She was nice to me. Okay, sure. Come on, Pontifex, let the young man have some fun. It is just a new development. <clears throat> a welcoming new development. Uh, anyway, there's uh, there's a place in town we shouldn't go. The Baron Badger. Sounds so like let's a not go there. Place? Hmm? What is the problem with it? I was uh, it felt rude to eavesdrop. Oh, uh, she said it wasn't the friendliest place. Or, uh, for people like us. What do you mean, for people like us? Non elves. I think he <laughs> blankly stares at Alex in the face. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? Some elves are friendlier than others to outsiders. Surely you know that. <laughs> I do. Alex, well, you understand you are a... Uh, you understand you are an elf, yes? Uh... Well, some would not see it that way, Professor. It depends. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> a fair point. Um, anyway... So, should we, uh, what, about what time is it again? We have arrived here, um, towards the end, uh, uh, middle to the end of the afternoon. Well, we could, uh, look for a library or, I don't know, now that we're here, not really sure which way to go first. Well, Should I was going to suggest finding living accommodations, but then you mentioned the library, and I understand they can be one and the same. <laughs> ah. I, <clears throat> I actually think we should look for an inn as well, just to make sure we actually have a bed for the night. Oh, I guess we should figure out roundabouts where they are, at least. We, uh, we didn't stay here too long before and uh honestly i never really spent much time around this colony like being close <clears throat> that's no problem it might be even bigger than aria well good that i know is the best in in town right oh. windsor um in terms of like knowing where things are yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what? Right, is this I'll... a background feature? <laughs> <laughs> yep. It's part I of the film book. Actually, oh. I forgot about my background feature. I would know where the library is. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. But, like, uh, in general, um, in this party, Brooke is a person that knows this place best, but you guys know it well, too. Sure. Um you I absolutely can tell you where the library, the scriptorium, <laughs> the university, or any sage or learned person or creature might <laughs> be. Um, we were only here for like a few hours and you just sniffed it out in that brief <laughs> time. <laughs> it is a specific brand of parchment. Um <laughs> Pontifex would know that these are three flying towers over here. Uh, they, they're, it's basically where Pontifex has just like hold himself up for as long as he could on the um, on those few days that he spent here with uh, Talix. Uh, whenever Talix would lose sight of him, that's where Pontifex was. Um, these uh, three towers are um, one of them. Uh, Pontifex has like. Seen it, uh, didn't have to spend too much time. Actually, I don't know. Um, it depends. One of them is a school of uh, uh, wizardry for uh, brand new ap apprentices to the spellcasting ways. Oh, yeah. Um, 
he wouldn't have had much to like do there, but I imagine he would have loved to like walk oh, around and share totally his knowledge. To lecture the young yeah. blood, especially the <laughs> if there's over. anyone there who is a non like magical race. Oh man, is he would totally be a motivational speaker for a day? <laughs> if I can do it, so can you. It only took me a hundred years. <laughs> this poor like <laughs> humans. Uh, it's almost ex <laughs> exclusively elves with a few um, gnomes that uh, would have would have been just. In, in the colony in general, but especially uh, in the in the wizarding school. Um, mm, he would mentor the elves. <laughs> it's like maybe one gnome in a class. <laughs> he mentored everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so. I swear the professor used to be a much more open-minded, friendly fellow. <laughs> something, something changed. Yeah, that's what happens when people hang around me. <laughs> okay, hold on, sorry, I have it on my notes. It took him 30 years. To become radicalized against the gnomes. <laughs> uh, no, that predates your birth. <laughs> um, the second tower, known as the Fount of Knowledge, is a library. Most of the library is off limits there's only like there's different floors and the uh, access to them depends on who you are um the first few floors are public anyone can go in there but then the higher up you go the more secret knowledge there is and more uh, restricted the access is but as a member of the order of scribes you have access to most of the library mm -hmm. uh the third one is uh, the uh, headquarters of the Simlianon Order of Scribes, where you also uh, would have been. Mm -hmm. um, how how yep. does one, just for posterity, like, how doth one get to these towers? <laughs> uh, you if have you to get. Fly? <laughs> you have to get someone close to uh, at least the district that they're flying over. Uh, and the closer you are, the more from a distance you don't see like any way of getting to them. But once you are like beneath them and you're looking up, you can see these like wisps of light. And if all you have to do is to like um, think about the fact that you'd like to go there, and that this light collects itself into like the shape of a little staircase that like goes down in a spiral all the way down to you. And once you step onto like the first few steps and you you hold onto the the handrail. Um, the it's like the the, letter, the circus just begins to like pull itself up um all the way upwards so you don't have to actually like climb to it and then you're up there so close to inventing an elevator <laughs> they still made it stairs <laughs> not ada really approved the, we dubbed it something of uh, an es escalatorium It's kind of now. It's kind of now. Escalatorium. It's, it's es escalatorium. <clears throat> well, the very first thing I need to do, I suppose, is uh, look for where to mail these. But perhaps I can just. Go do that and meet you at the, uh... <clears throat> well, have we figured out how oh, to... Oh, no, if we are to find where we are staying, and then you are going to the mail place, that is my next stop. Okay. Remember, I sent uh, documents out to uh, my mentor back in uh, uh, Eleonard and, and, and mentioned to forward things to Sim Leilon. That's right. So hopefully Sorry. there is something for me Feels here. like it's been so long. It's have, only been a number of days. Have you decided whether or how we go about them, them like using magic on you to spill the truth? I'm going to think about that a little bit longer. Maybe after we see if we can even arrange this meeting. 
then we'll think about what sorts of drastic measures we might, we might need to take. I think if we can have the meeting here in Simulon, it there's no worry. It should be safe enough. <laughs> I'm a little nervous about putting myself under that powerful of magic. Not that I don't trust you, Prok, but it's just... What if... Oh, there's... I mean, I'm not even sure if... consequences, you know? Of course. I mean, I'm not even sure if he would do it. Let okay. alone him being around. Let's just get a... a feeling. How this meeting is going to go. First. Uh, on that note, when... Mm -hmm. is because uh, like you said we've been here before not super long but i figure if we were here um is there a church of the wolf do churches church of the wolf even exist uh yes they exist and okay. yes there is one uh there okay, is okay. one main building which will be this one uh, uh which which one? Oh, um this building. Okay, there, there we go. There we go. Sorry, your cursor blends in with literally every building. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. I wasn't really okay, pointing at it too much. I see. It's labeled. Cool, cool. Okay, All right, so... Is the in first? Yeah, Brooke, uh, you know the In town. first, mail second, library third. All right, I'm heading to the inn. <laughs> okay, uh, Brooke, you know the inn that uh, Talix just mentioned not to go towards? Uh, so you pick a different one. You've stated a few. Um, which one, what uh, kind of feel are you going for? Are you going for like an expensive one? Um, <laughs> the inn. Um, <laughs> like, is there anything particular you're looking for? Just someone where you, like, where you know they they have a fjordborg sized bed. Is that an expensive one? Is that an expensive one? It's a fjordborg sized bed? <laughs> uh, well, any except the cheapest uh, uh, inns generally have uh, beds for, like, to accommodate different, si different uh, species of people. Well, we just got some money. Might as well go for like low or medium in. Okay, like slightly better than you would normally go for. For. Mhm. Mm okay, um, and this of course also. Well, we'll get to that. Okay, uh, so I guess you would pick uh, uh, the the dragon wagon, um, <laughs> oh, no. and it has like. It has like a little the, the 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 logo of the place is a little wagon with a fairy dragon um riding it. Um Okay. Also Which... Winter, I have a, I have a question. I'm I'm on the Plurnum Pantheon dock. Yes. I'm trying to look for the wolf. You well, won't find it. <laughs> okay. Just Apocryphal. okay. <laughs> yeah, cuz uh... it is not uh, a god of the Jade Pantheon. I, I do see. not okay. recognize it. It's, yeah, elf, elf, elf god, god, yeah. That turn on. Okay, just making chicken. sure. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. yeah, no, you're not like missing it. Um, it's this is specifically the. Uh, it's a panther that's worshipped across most of Plurna, uh, but you know the Moon Watch aligned uh, uh, countries uh, don't recognize it. Or at least not in the same way, and instead some worship uh, um, gods that uh, to the Jade Council are like <clears throat> false gods, uh, or non-existent, or just not actual deities. And the wolf is uh, one of the most uh, um, uh, one of the deities that most elves uh, are thought to recognize. What does he stand for? Uh, the domain of the moon. See, makes a lot of sense. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, the dragon wagon would be this building over here. 
Um, as you walk through the roads of Simlielon, um, it looks a little different from uh, how it usually does. It's uh, the city is more colorful, uh, decorated. There are pennants connecting rooftops over the main roads. Um, with this being an elven colony, um, they uh, do not celebrate the day of deliverance in the same way that the rest of the world does. Um, but uh, they still recognize the end of the war. They still celebrate uh, the end of the war. Um, so uh, with today is the 12th of Amwa. And so we're five days away from uh, the celebrations on the Day of Deliverance. And the preparations are very much underway. <clears throat> um, this place is bustling with life. Uh, you, you see uh, minstrels singing at uh, every corner of every road. People giving lectures, uh, uh, somewhat like uh, it, it happens in, in Cleon. Um, People are at work decorating or just busy running left and right. Uh, everybody here living a complex life that you're barely glimpsing into. Um, most of the major roads are actually a little hard to, to navigate even as uh, uh, evening approaches just because of how packed they are. Uh, there are stands uh, almost on every road selling all sorts of things, food, items of all kinds, souvenirs. Um, you're actually approached multiple times by people um, just like calling out to you and, um, and trying to trying to, trying to to sell you something. Um, and although compared to um, your group has been mainly in Vera and Cleon, um, not much time spent in Aria. Uh, so compared to those places, uh, uh, the glances that uh, uh, the, the the worried glances that are uh, directed in Tekka's way are more um, people. Sometimes even just straight up like uh, they will cross the road to avoid your group, uh, and you can see that they seem to be particularly having an issue with him. Um, this is sort of like the main plaza, uh, just the largest, uh, um, well, it's not really a free space to walk around because there's just so much here to do as well. Uh, so many little stalls, uh, so many people going around their business, but eventually you manage to uh, make your way uh, to where Brooke takes you. Um, as, <laughs> as explained before, uh, the dragon wagon. Uh, here it is. Um, and as soon as you open the door, there's a, there's a little, there's some chimes that uh, announce your arrival as you step in. This place uh, is already getting uh, very crowded. There's still free tables, but a lot of people are, uh, seem to be coming uh, in for, for dinner. Um, but Brooke, the one of the elves that runs this place uh, uh his name is kailu um as soon as you step in he just like he he looks up and then as he recognizes you he just waves uh, um glad to see you uh not a single like perplexed uh look towards Tekka or any of your other companions uh, um he just seems Happy to see you again, and he yells. He's like on the other side of the uh, of the place compared to you when you come in, and he just yells, "Oh, Brooke, I'll be right there with you." Brooke smiles, nods, oh. looks to the rest of the group. Well, <clears throat> I'm pretty sure this is as good as we can have it. As a stay, so oh. let's stay here. That seems like an improvement. It's a little busy, but. Oh, there won't be a the place where it isn't busy, Talix. Oh, the deliverance is going to be a little uh, different this year. I'm sorry, every time we're going to mention this NPC's name, I'm just going to think of Caillou. Caillou. Yeah, that's how yeah. I wrote him down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Me too. Caillou? Wait. I don't know what that Caillou. is. Caillou. Oh, really? It's an old cartoon. Yeah, I think that's cartoon character. 
Yeah, uh, I think it's C A I L L O U, maybe. Oh, is I it? think there's L's in there. <clears throat> a Cana Canadian oh, yeah. educational children's television series. Caillou is basically what most of YouTube poop is based around. <laughs> is it? <laughs> at least from what I. At My least girlfriend's telling me that it's a French cartoon. It, well, it does seem French, doesn't it? Yeah. Um. Hmm. This happens a lot uh, with me, where it's like, I'm not aware of children's cartoons that everyone else has seen. <laughs> what, but this one's European. It says Canadian here. On, I mean, I opened Wikipedia. Uh, Wait, oh, yeah, 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 hold on. It probably aired originally in the Canadian? French language. Is it French Canadian? Oh, okay, okay, okay. it's French Canadian. She's uh -huh. Canadian, so that's why she knows it. Uh huh. Okay. <laughs> we have an expert. Uh huh. <laughs> A native. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right, so anyway. you guys are mm, just planning on getting a, a room, right? And then you're gonna be off already. I think. Yeah, basically just is the plan. Getting a room, a dump seat. our shit, and move on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right? I'm kind of curious to see what the um, what the cuisine the cuisine will be here. Um, do, 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 do. I will tell you in a second. seem fairly worn out from the journey. Perhaps they should take a moment of rest inside <laughs> of the inn. Yeah, those two particularly suffered a, a lot at the hands of the Atar a, a bit of head trauma, the rest maybe. Of the yeah. <laughs> and honestly, yeah. I <clears throat> uh. yeah. But you should give us all of your money and valuables in the <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, can we roll a persuasion check on that? Okay, but uh, what are you guys doing? <laughs> We're robbing them. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, <laughs> uh, by the time, um, so, by the time you just like, there's a little like a uh, uh, bar area, uh, and by the time that Kylo is uh, ready to to see you, he just like, um, he he greets all of you, but then his attention is just like directed immediately towards uh, uh, towards Brooke and says. Uh, um, Mm -hmm. um, and Brooke, you know, um, you know this man's affiliation with uh, with your group, uh, um, mm -hmm. and you know, as he as he immediately just asks, uh, uh, Brooke, are you are you here for work, or mm. uh, just enjoying dinner for tonight? We're gonna stay a little bit longer. I'm not sure if it will be your work yet, but did anything change around here, or is there anything in the last few weeks or months? I should be aware of. Oh no! All, that, all that's happened is. Uh, <laughs> uh, what? What, is that? <laughs> what is happening? Pop up from <laughs> 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 uh, things have gotten extremely busy for me, but uh, uh, news on 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 your side of things? No, not particularly. Well, of course you should be asking uh, uh, the others, but, uh, well, I suppose there is the one thing. Uh, um, lots of Panthers lately coming back for for a job just west of here. You heard of that one? Oh, and he's, like, was, getting out yeah. a key from beneath, uh, uh, from beneath the counter, and he's just, like, handing it straight towards you. I'm taking the key. I, I think I've, I've heard about that in Era. Or Cleon, one of the two cities is mm. at least, or colonies. I was told. I so. imagine most phantoms are aware of it. Uh, they're getting just a large group of them together to go deal with that, that issue. Oh, but uh, uh, you guys don't want to hear us talk about our own business. He, he says as he like turns to his sort of group. Uh, you're with him, yeah? Staying for the night as well? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, we're at least we, the night. We, we share business. That's cool. Yeah, they belong to me. <laughs> They're good people. Uh, what? Uh, I suppose that is one way. Of, uh, that's a, that's a way uh, All right, let me rephrase. They're my friends. Oh, I don't doubt a thing. Oh, I will take that one. That's much better than being your slave. <laughs> <laughs> Brooke looks perplexed <laughs> at Alex. Huh. I'd assume so. Uh, Alright. <clears throat> well, uh, friends of... 
yes, uh, uh, friends of Brooke get uh, a little discount. Um, and he, like, um, takes out a little ledger, <clears throat> and, uh, um, he glances all, uh, at all of you, he, um, leans over the counter a little bit to, to be able to actually spot, uh, uh Pip. Uh, he seems to be, like, getting a feel for everyone's, uh, uh height. Uh, uh um. Okay, here it Just is. Tower over this pool. <laughs> I don't. I don't remember uh, which one of us is taller. Is it Brooke or Pontifex? I know Pontifex is hunched over. But I don't remember who's actually tall. He's like I'm, six seven or something. Yeah, I'm seven five. Uh, yeah, uh, oh, okay, yeah, you're huge. a lot taller. Okay. Uh, but yeah, Pontifex is still very tall. <clears throat> uh. Oh god, what was I doing? Here it is. Uh, Kailu asks <laughs> if uh, um, you're all sharing one room, if you want separate, uh, separate lodgings. I look at the others, want to share a room again? I Actually, I think sharing a room would be probably better, right? Yes, I agree, um, given the recent developments. <clears throat> yeah. Of the Please metallic variety. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're sharing a room. So run room for five, please. Is there like a big room, like a king's room or something like that? <laughs> well, our largest room is taken, but uh, uh, this one is uh, designed to accommodate for eight people. Yeah, that should be sufficient. Very well. We have a uh, largest a room. Who needs to stretch with... their arms, you see. <laughs> uh, this one has a view of the plaza. Top floor. That will be seven silver pieces per bed. Uh, Brooke, of course, you don't have to pay. Oh. Um. <laughs> well, well I'll take it out. Local celebrity. <laughs> um, and he's actually like going to, like, swap out the key that he just gave you, um, and hand you a different one. Okay. Well, thank you for that. I'll make sure to Fun feast good we'll pay here. Him the total sum, whatever it is. Be <clears throat> oh, covering the entire thing? So seven times four, because Brooke isn't there. So mm -hmm. 20, 28 silver, so two gold, eight silver. Mm -hmm. Easy. Yep. <clears throat> Thank you, Professor. Yeah, please, it is the least I can do. Eh? Welcome to the colony of my hometown. Uh, I suppose the town of which I have a home. <laughs> And t -t 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 Does it come with a meal? Are uh, you hungry? <laughs> Breakfast is included. We've, we've been eating bread for the past, or oh. I have anyway. I don't remember, did we do any fishing on the boat? Nope. Yeah. I don't think we did. Well, if you want, before we go off, we could just eat something. I don't know if Pip could sleep through the screams of the fish. <laughs> I think we established before that fishing is like incredibly traumatic for him. Right. Um. Well, yeah, let's just see what they got. Well, you know, we passed a whole bunch of places that were selling food in town. I mean, <clears throat> if we want something for now, yeah, you, you guys. Well you want street food or you want restaurant food? the local food. delicacies, the oh. food markets. We'll be here for it. We'll, we'll be here for a while, right? Yeah, okay. I hope so. So we can try out all the food delica delicacies. <laughs> Longer than days. Now, yeah, I would, I would hope. <clears throat> all right. Um, Kalu, is there a free table somewhere? Uh, uh yes, absolutely. Um, uh, I need like lead you to one, and this is the kind of place that has like menus. Um, and, like, a, a meal of the day, and, uh, um, instead of, like, there's, there's actually options here, um. Alright, then let's eat. You can get, like, starters. <laughs> Brooke sits down and um, looks for the menu. <laughs> the, in general, uh, to have a meal here, it will be five silver per person. We're not gonna give a different price to different meals. 
Oh god, you want me to wait for your list of food, don't you? Yeah, what, what's uh, the oh yeah, we're waiting. What's, the, what's today's special? Oh god. Okay. I think actually if he like is walking over with the menu in hand, like to hand them to us, uh, I there... think Pontifex is just gonna like, while taking the menu from his hand, tell him that I want the meal of the day. <laughs> and take the menu from him anyways and start like fiddling with the paper between his fingers. <laughs> Okay, hold day? on, there's no vinegar in it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Um, oh, yeah, this is like the perfect place where they would like be willing to make substitutions or remove things. If anyone is doesn't eat certain things, they'll, they'll just make the thing for you. Um, but yeah, if the, uh, the meal of the day includes a, a, a cheese platter, um, a cream of broccoli, and, uh, um, oh, look, it's grilled fish. <laughs> Perfect. No vinegar. You don't put vinegar on your fish. Oh, well. Oh. What did you say? Said you don't put vinegar on your fish. I don't know who does what with that stuff. <laughs> I You're found that uh, people do not always use vinegar as it is intended. <laughs> oh, yikes! I'll just I'll just whisper to the waiter and ask that he puts vinegar on my fish before bringing it out, rather than having me do it at the table. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um. Oh, you know what I could go for after so long. A spiced wine. Is there a house wine of some sort? Oh boy. Um, you are an elf. The Dragon Wagon offers. Yes, there is a. Uh, there are wines available. And for. Uh, hmm. Yeah, for anyone of like. Uh, for anyone born uh, and who grew up in Plurna, they would know that like the best uh, wines all come from uh, Zvarda. And uh, um, however, this place uh, has no, no, it has one, uh, one <laughs> Zvarda wine. Uh, but everything else is of Elven. Yes, it's of Elven make. Um, yeah, he's looking there's, for like, elf. a few options. Elven wine. They have a silver giant Merlot. That's like the fanciest one. You know what, sure, let's splurge. The bottle is three gold pieces. Yeah, done. Have any mead? Um. Da -da 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 -da. So three gold for the wine, and then how much is the food? Five silver. Okay. Mm hmm. They have a few Did you ales. Get a bottle of wine or a glass of wine? Uh, uh, three gold is for a bottle. Yeah, he's buying the bottle. All right, then I'll chime one point five gold in. Okay. Cool. This is the Savard wine. Nope. No, the Selden one. Oh. Um, they have a few ales. Um, I'll save what it is... for later. <laughs> okay. What are your IPAs? Uh, uh, okay. Wait, uh, so you're not getting it? Well, no. All right. For anyone who wants, who does want an ale, uh, it just comes down to... Wait, where is it? Oh god, I lost it. I had it just like a moment I don't, ago. I don't think we need to get into the nitty-gritty here. <laughs> <It's fine>. Okay. <laughs> Okay. I need to have all of the pricing for everything to all understand right. their business so, acumen. <laughs> so make sure that you have like yeah, the three gold pieces uh, for uh, the wine bottle and the five silver for everyone for the meal. Uh, uh, yeah, so I paid uh, 1.5 for, for the wine and uh, five silver for my food, so I just spent two gold. Okay. Same. The wine is uh, three gold. I yeah, we're yeah, but I pay it. Half. Oh, 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 sorry, sorry. I missed that. <laughs> right. No, I'm just uh, telling you, I'm only paying half. <laughs> you can deal with it. I'm you, with uh... the celebrity. Come on, come on, it's a male. 
<laughs> no, I'm with him. I'm a groupie. I get half price. <laughs> this is the kind of meal where um, you end up... Uh, it's unlikely that you're even able to finish it. Uh, uh, portions are very generous uh, and uh, uh, even slightly tailored to, to your race as uh, Brooke's uh, meal is visibly larger than everyone else's. Um, normally this oh, would fair. actually... Normally this would cost more, uh, but the, the price uh, is reduced for Brooke and it ends up like yeah. mashing everyone else's. Uh, Cute. I went ahead and covered uh, Tekka's and Pip's simplicity. Okay. Uh, not bad. Not gonna lie, it feels good to be back. Yeah. Uh, Wither, do they allow food slash drink at the library upon a scribe's request? No. Um, <laughs> rules are very strict. Uh, the yeah. library even, despite, uh, oh boy. Uh, there is an incredible number of rules about what is and what isn't allowed in the library. Um, and e in the public library even, um, you know that it's covered by, uh, like, the, the insides are protected by anti-magic fields. Um, so not even spell casting is allowed. Although the, the scribes only sections, you can use magic. Um, you're... It, you're supposed to only use spells, uh, um, you know, obviously don't set the library on fire, but uh, you know that there are spells that allow a person, for example, to search for specific books within the uh, large library or to assimilate mm. the knowledge of a book in, like, a minute. Um, so that kind of magic is used a lot uh, and among the scribes. Uh, um, and so that's why their private libraries are not protected against magic. Cool, cool. Makes sense. And yeah, food and drinks? Absolutely not. How do anti-magic fields interact with magic items? Uh, generally, magic items are suppressed within uh, an anti-magic field. But it doesn't, like, affect them in any way? It doesn't, like, it doesn't, like remove... Uh, yeah, um, that applies to spells, too. Like, if you're under the effect of a spell, it's not dispelled. It is... Held. Yeah. yeah, it will okay. come back uh, and continue. It's like you're pausing its duration and it will resume where it was uh, er, previously once you leave. Okay. Um, hold on. I forgot that I need. Yeah, okay. While you are eating, uh, towards the end of the meal, as you are. Um, Considering perhaps getting getting a dessert, uh, um, you uh, you just hear a, a soft uh, spoken uh, feminine voice uh, um, next to your table, just calling out, um, "Excuse me." Turn to look. Uh, there is a woman next to your table, um, and. Uh, Elven woman with uh, uh, white hair. Um, she with elves sometimes it's hard to tell their age, but this one is uh, uh, very um, obviously uh, many many centuries uh, into her life. Uh, um, a little bit, uh, her hands trembling a little bit, and she she is addressing Brooke as she says, um, "Pardon me, are you the are you the cleric I've been hearing about?" Uh. I'm. <clears throat> I'm sorry. You must mistake me. I'm not really a cleric, but uh, luckily, and I'll <laughs> give a slap on Talek's oh, shoulder. Oh, oh, um, <laughs> what, in what context did you hear about a cleric? Um. Well, I, I have been told of a fearbolg that can um, cure diseases. I uh, haven't seen any other Firbolg in town. Uh, um, uh, I'm I... so sorry to disturb you. I 
no, 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 I'll it's get fine. Going. Do you, do you, no, no, wait. Do you know their name? Because I haven't seen another Fulborg for bulk at all on Lidaria besides me. I'm no, no, I, I don't know their name. Do you have a description? All I was told was that there was a Firbolg that could cure diseases. Um, a, a man, that's all I know. Uh, uh, yeah, so sorry for disturbing you. Please just uh, enjoy your meal. Um, wait, if we if we find him, maybe we could uh, let you know. Are you around sure. here somewhere? What the uh, cleric in specific you're referring to, but uh, you have two of them here at the same table, so perhaps we are in the know. Unfortunately, I'm not. Uh, I myself can't do that. Right? Wait, wait, what is this? Oh, wait, I can. <laughs> but only tomorrow. <laughs> wait, how many how many cleric levels are you? Are, do, you have, do you have channel divinity? I do. You can convert but... channel divinity into a spell slot. You're right. Yeah. I know wait, it's like a no, new wait, rule. No, no, so. I, use that. I, use, I use my channel. Wait, does channel divinity come back on a short rest? Short rest. As a cleric. Oh, so I could. Yeah. Yeah, clerics are sick. Though. You get you get short rest spell slots. You're basically a warlock, but better. You get a single short rest spell don't, slot don't per kill. day. But yes. Um. As I said, there are uh, more than one cleric. There is more than one way to cure a disease. Yes, I, I could help you. Sorry, sometimes I don't even know what I can do. <laughs> <laughs> My faith has been slipping recently. And don't worry, I'm fucking despised by the Jade Council, so I should be Wait, wait, the spell here. slots aren't the issue, I need to prepare it. That's the issue. Ah. Yeah. That's why I was like... Yeah. Ah. Uh, 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 wait, <laughs> I don't know where we're at in a conversation. I can help okay. you tomorrow for a cheeseburger today. <laughs> <laughs> we can look for him, or maybe I can help you, but I, I'm i a little exhausted from uh, from something we went through earlier today. If you'd allow me. It, if you could help my husband, that would be much appreciated. Um, where can we find you? Maybe tomorrow morning? Um, uh, yes, I... Uh, thank you, T this is my address. And she'll give you uh, directions to a... To, to one particular um, tower. Um, bu 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 not a floating one, I hope. Here it is. No, it's not a floating one. Um, it this is uh, near near the lake. Uh, it's uh, a just a residential um, district that's on the ground. Um, her name is Nandil, and uh, she gives you directions to a particular. Um, there's multiple apartments in the, that tower where different families live, and she'll give you like a specific floor. All right. I'll see you in the morning. Be safe, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you so much. And you see during the conversation that she um, has been glancing uh, at the two of you. Uh, actually, remind me, uh, your holy symbols, uh, um, are you wearing them? Are they visible? Uh, Pontifex is. Alex, the only... He doesn't have a holy symbol. He just has that... Uh... That um, shawl thing, and uh, he doesn't wear that casually. Okay. Um, can you roll an insight check? Of the goat. Just any of you. Should any be insight? Yeah, 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 any of you want to roll an insight check. Okay. Inside, inside! Wow. 
Let's go! Alright. Uh, Talix is into rolling. No. Yeah, that's, that's okay. Reason. Mm -hmm. um, Unless I'd see it through my see something from my passive insight, I don't <laughs> see a reason to um, like look into her. No, this this felt like a normal normal conversation, and Brooke, you just uh, um, you just made sure to like watch where she's looking and her expression, see if there is. Um, you know that there can be uh, animosity between elves and the practitioners of uh, magic of. Uh, um, of the uh, Jade Council, but even when she, even when you saw her eyes just pause on uh, Pontifex's uh, goat amulet, uh, um, you you saw no uh, sign of uh, her being bothered by it. Uh, yeah. I mean, she asked for a cleric. She can't. <laughs> mm? There's there's only one kind of cleric. <laughs> Maybe. And yeah, she, uh, after thanking you again, and, yeah, giving you directions to her place, she, she will let you finish dinner. Jonas, she is, um, is she leaving the table? She is, right? Or leaving the inn? Or is she waiting for us? No, she's leaving the, the inn. Uh, I just... <clears throat> as soon as she is out of the inn, uh, excuse me for one second, and I would like to stand up and go to Kailu. Okay. Talix is just going to kind of whisper to Pontifex, have you ever heard of a, of a cleric? Farbog? Yeah, not. Yeah, I'm sure I've heard of several back in, uh, back in Florina. But not one here. I'm fairly new to Ladaria, you know. We, yeah, in fact, Brook is the only furbolg that you've heard of uh, in Ladaria. Yeah. Oh. Um. When I reach Kalu, uh, ex uh, excuse me. Um. Do you have a second? Kylo is visibly stressed out, but his attention just immediately snaps to you as he smiles warmly and says, Brooke, for you, of course. Anytime. What can I do for you? This will be quick. I, I just met a woman that talked about a verbal cleric that is supposed to be in this town. Have you seen anyone like me? Ooh, um... Oh, is that the Furbolg? Oh, <laughs> yes. This new character. Surprise. <laughs> Furbolg cleric. <laughs> Can never have too many clerics. Yeah, who needs Dork. damage? <laughs> well, we're having clerics blow stuff up. Power class. Oh, I'm so excited. I can see Sid. He is here, but. Muted. I'm here, I didn't want to interrupt. No, oh. no, no, no. Oh, Hello! You've got to help us, we're about Hi. to die. We need all the help we can get. N no! Oh. Yes, no. yes, yes, yeah, we're, we're dying, help. <laughs> you're, you're in an inn, you're eating dinner, it's been nice, you found a, a place that doesn't treat you guys poorly. But suddenly, Tekka starts choking. <laughs> <laughs> On the the old <laughs> woman who was previously asking about a fur bog has her hand outstretched, flexing her fingers, and you're being forced choked. Oh. Um. What okay. So <laughs> they <laughs> they're messing with you. That's no. Um. God, I lost my place in the notes again. I'm oh. really terrible at this. <laughs> okay, oh, we, we got it. All right. So, um, Kailu, after thinking about it for, for a moment, he, he nods vigorously and says, uh, I did hear about a furball in, in town a few days ago. I thought it was you, actually. Um, and then you showed up, and 
I thought it was you. <clears throat> uh, I'll put a gold on the table. Um, if he ever enters this inn, can you let me know? <laughs> Rook, uh, you know you don't have to pay me for this, right? As he, he says as he takes the gold and slides it towards himself. I know, but you've been doing so much, so might as well. Right? I can hold him for you if you want. Come uh, up with an excuse, keep him here for a few hours until you're back. If that's possible, sure. What do you Otherwise, want? If you... Um, all right, it's just uh, what is your relationship with him? Do you want me to beat him up or... Um... Uh, actually, I'm not sure what Furbox this is, but... I haven't seen a single Furbark on Lidaria besides myself, so I'm interested. Just personal interest. Very well. Uh, if I see him around, I'll make sure to put you two in touch. Thank you. And I'll return to the table. Alright. <clears throat> Excuse that. Uh... Nothing to worry about. I just made sure if the uh, Furbuck comes into this inn, we'll be notified. He's very useful. Yeah. Well, I'd be. I mean, maybe it was more common back in your day, Professor, but I just haven't heard of many, uh, you know, Moonwatch folk. Taking up a uh, position of cleric, but it's good. I'm really interested. Probably have a lot to talk about. I would not be surprised if he wasn't exactly a cleric of a, a trade council deity, but <laughs> luckily I've wrote a book, so I understand <laughs> the wolf well enough. More than one. You've written, you've written a book on the wolf? Oh, yes, I've written several books even. Uh, I believe I have uh, 16 volumes at the moment and I am working on my uh, 17th. Uh, it is volume, uh, it is actually volume 16 uh, that I have on the wolf. It is called Theological oh, cool. History, volume 16, The Wolf and the Arcane Races of Plurna, THHS, uh, book number 773-8883. This <laughs> <laughs> uh, is the textbook for my two-year doctorate level course that I taught. Uh, to qualify as the professor of historical theology. So, uh... Back whenever the wolf was, you know, around... Wait, were you there? What do you mean? Before you left. Before Wait, I left. Winter, ah? I need to explain. Before the wolf left, uh, how long... Was Pontifex alive for that? Um, the wolf is thought to have left the tree when uh, uh, a deformation of the Jade Council. I think Pontifex yeah. was alive for that. Yeah, I predate the Jade Council. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so, things were probably quite different back then. Huh? Yeah, it is, but uh, most of what I, uh, most of my theology courses were, of course, taught uh, the Jade Council agenda, you could say. But yes, uh, unlike a lot of the current people, I never discounted the wolf as one of the deities. He's just less popular where we are from. Hmm. But, uh, yeah, hold on, actually. Uh, 160, uh, I was a little over 50 years old when the Jade Council was formed. That is... Maddening to think about, honestly. Yes, I was uh, born towards the end of, uh, well, supposedly born towards perhaps the middle or the beginning of uh, the year 765. The Jade Council was not until 823. <laughs> is uh, the book about the wolf uh, the one that he's not proud of? Uh, yes. Okay. Correct. I wonder if they have your book in the library here. Gosh, I hope not. 
at least not that one. But uh, <laughs> Plex the rest, I know that they do. <laughs> well. Well, it's been a good meal. It looks like we're gonna have plenty to keep us busy here, if we wish it. Uh, are we all ready to go? Deliver some mail and then I guess go to the library. Is there anything else we need to do? Hmm. Uh, to bring uh, Sid up to speed, um, you guys have just arrived in Sim Leonon. Um, had one more chat with Nind, who recommended against heading to a certain. Uh, uh, in that, um, well, that she didn't like uh, where the, the owner is uh, uh, rude, and so instead you let Brooke lead you to a place that he um, knows uh, and uh, likes, uh, and you've just been uh, there eating food and uh, hearing uh, rumors about a furbold cleric uh, um, so that has been spotted somewhere in the city. Um, I think that's mainly it. Thank you. Oh, and it's also called the Dragon Wagon. Oh yeah, that's important. The, <laughs> the end, yes, Which it I'm has... just thinking the image, like its little emblem, is just like, a, like the back end of a dragon that just has an absolute dump truck of a dragon ass. <laughs> <laughs> the Dragon Wagon. No! Right. Yeah, what yeah. I said is that it's a little yeah, fairy dragon uh, riding a cart. But, sure, sure, but sure. The sure, name sure. definitely evokes something else. And <laughs> for sure. I think the original and image was the the fat yeah, ass they, dragon. They cleaned it up. <laughs> Someone's like, "Yeah, we gotta fix that." <laughs> <laughs> it's an old name. They had to change ownership. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> The city used to be a little bit sleazier before the... <laughs> the, the previous owner of the establishment was the type to tell people to smile more. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. It's, it's, and it's facing the church. Yeah, they... Hence the change. Yeah. <laughs> okay, next destination? I guess we're gonna go deliver mail. Uh, we probably don't have to roleplay all of it if we wanna. I don't wanna, like, bog everyone down with our errand running unless there's a reason to. Uh, I have two, two pieces of mail in specific that are a fairly big deal if they're, if they're here. So I'll probably wanna go through those, but anything else okay. is, yeah, superfluous. Uh, right. Like you want to go through the mailing process? Uh, yeah, to, because um, a long time ago, uh, whenever we were at the place with uh, with Stars and Her Eyes, I forget the mm -hmm. name of that town. Cleon. Uh, yeah, he uh, he sent those two letters. He sent one letter to uh, to his mentor and one letter to Petra, uh, and mm -hmm. told both of them that he would be in Simlielon uh, soon. Uh, and I remember I wrote something about like, you know forming some kind of like correspondence with Sim mm -hmm. Um So basically checking if, if he's gotten anything from them. Yeah, uh, you will know that the, those letters cannot possibly even have reached uh, their their um uh, uh poop the people therefore the um mm -hmm. because like they, they it's not been long enough uh, for for the letters to be delivered across uh, the Sea of Chaos yet. Ah, okay. Um, so, and definitely not early enough to, to, uh, to get a reply. Uh, everything between the two continents needs to be, needs to be brought by, like, hand, uh, you know, by ships. There is no, like, instantly, mm -hmm. uh, getting any information across. How long, roughly, is the journey from, from Ladaria to Plarna? It's about... I think we went over this before. We have it's somewhere in my yeah, notes. I just remember. So, um, it wasn't like months, was it? it I th it I think like it was like two, two months. Two oh, oh, geez. Really? Oh, dang. How does anyone do that? Holy crap! Mm. 
Okay. Oh boy. It's somewhere in my notes. I don't know where. I may have severely overestimated the amount of time that we would spend in each town along the way. <laughs> <laughs> well, we were meant to stay in Aria longer, but a lot of things changed. Also, how long has it been since... Uh, since that town? I don't remember the name of it. Vera? Yeah, 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 since Vera. You have left Vera... Uh, on the third of Amwa, today is the twelfth. So it's been oh, eight days. <laughs> okay. Oh, it's been like a week and a half. It is fine. Only four months to go. <laughs> Sorry, Jamuel. Uh, do you still want to go to the post office? I mean, yeah, do you no. still want oh, to go play? Still yeah, yeah, you're no, still mailing the letters. Um, could just be um, brought to me. Huh. Um, okay. What else uh, is Pontifex sending? No, he's not sending anything. He was just he was planning to check for, for correspondence right. from them, but that's not um, possible. So and I don't Talix... actually think he cares to go to the mail place. Talix is sending two letters, yeah? Yeah, one to Boven and one to uh, Varianthar. That'll be within, you know, not too far away. I just wrote Tharium Bar. <laughs> nope. Wrong name. <laughs> uh, Pontifex uh, has a lot of junk mail waiting for him. Yes. Everything has a silver lining. <laughs> <laughs> God What's please. this life insurance they keep trying to sell you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. I should read up on all of the policies. There are lots of brochures. It seems kind of dubious. Bah. If they took the time to write it, it is worth the time to read it. <laughs> I hope. As long as it is not that weird smut that some people put out and call art. Dang. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we're learning all sorts of things. It is just offensive that they, they, they're there to put such a... a, a, a oh, I don't have a word for it in your language. But they put this in the same building as my wonderful knowledge. I even saw one of them on my shelf next to one of my own books one time. Clearly misplaced. Oh. Hmm. Monsters. Okay. Letters mailed. Um, let's abandon that conversation. And uh, um, where to next? To oh, oh it didn't pick you up. Yeah, very... Okay. Um, as it's. Did I hear someone about to speak? No, okay. Um, Alright, as we went over... Um, as, we, as we said earlier, uh, as you approach uh, uh, this district, you position yourself so roughly... You have to go around, actually, so it's over here. Um, as you begin to approach this district from uh, the direction where you were earlier, and you look up, and instructed by Pontifex, uh, um, you think about uh, wanting to reach these towers. You see these little drops of uh, droplets of light begin to fall and collect themselves and form this uh, um, shining, partially see-through uh, spiral staircase uh, that comes all the way down to the ground in front of your feet, wide enough to accommodate all of you if you were like side by side. I'd recommend we go together. It's a little terrifying the first. 20 or so times. <laughs> <laughs> and there's no railing on the staircase? There is <laughs> railing. Oh, okay. No railing would be so scary. I would crawl up. No, definitely <laughs> uh, hold on to the railing. And I rec recommend also closing your eyes. 
and waiting for someone else to tell you that you're there. <laughs> uh, but then you fail to witness the majesty of uh, their creation. That's... It is a wonderful tool. Some things are fine to be unwitnessed. <laughs> I think Tekka taught us that. I feel as though I have failed you as a teacher. <laughs> <laughs> as each of you tentatively puts a foot on the first step of the escalatorium, um, you, you, you walk up a few steps and then you feel the entire thing just shake a little bit and you hold on and the circus be be begins to retract upward um, and the whole thing takes before, like a, a before it takes off Talix is going to count the number of steps on it to make sure he's standing on the exact center step <laughs> on the center of the circus the center of the park center that's actually the there, right? yeah um so he's not not yeah. too close to the back or front where he could yeah, yeah. In either direction. <laughs> yeah okay yeah he'll uh Talix will be like ahead of the group uh, um some steps ahead uh, holding on as the entire thing just pulls you upward. It almost takes a full minute uh, um, to reach uh, the tower uh, above your heads. And uh, um, you're standing uh, in front uh, of a large entranceway. And it's just so bizarre to see a door that just on your side leads to nothing. Uh, there's just this platform that uh, has... Where the, the circuit is like... Uh, has flattened itself, so it's just this large, uh, partially transparent surface that you're standing on. Um, and you reach forward toward uh, the large double doors, and uh, you enter uh, the Fount of Knowledge. And for as incredible as this little trip uh, vertically upward um, was, the inside is surprisingly plain. You are in a library. The only unusual thing about it is just its massive size. You can look up and see multiple floors uh, that just share the same central um, space. And you can see all the walkways around and shelves and shelves as far as your eyes can see. I never really understood the name of this place, <sighs> Professor. Do you think they misspelled fonts whenever they were translating to Plernin? I don't know. I googled it, it's supposed to be found. <laughs> yeah, not font? Really? Yeah, I called it font origin and I was like, that sounds wrong. And, well, they're both accepted. Found was like, I think was like the proper original and now you can do both. Yeah, no, actually you're right. Crazy. Proper medieval. <laughs> proper medieval. <laughs> Middle English. Um, okay. What would you like to do here? Pontifex is going to immediately scurry off and try to find his books and see what books are neighboring them. His, that, his rivals, so to speak. After you said that, Talix is going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Did we both uh, scurry off in the same direction? Well, professor, are you, are you sure you, you, need, you, had a, you were going to look up something about... Uh, you drow, you right? hear... You hear just a, you, you hear a shh. Is this a diversion? <laughs> <clears throat> um, as something, is it something like, um, just enter your vision for a moment, just floating a few inches away from your faces as a, an exceptionally small, um, fairy, um, just angrily, like almost hissing at you, just shh, quiet. Oh no, it's yeah. you! And she, <laughs> as she recognizes, uh, he recognizes Pontifex. So. What? Just keep what? it down this time, okay? This time. Oh, oh, it's you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> He's like grimace. <laughs> this uh, uh, this man is named Acorn, and he's just, um, uh, you know how some. Um, people, some teachers, uh, um, researchers sometimes can get this like inflated sense of self. Uh, um, just you know, they know so much, uh, so that automatically means they, they they're so much better than everyone else. And it's like it's like this kind of personality trait. It's like concentrated into the tiny body of this fairy. 
naturally. Talos is just going to be grinning, like, hello, and wave at it. Uh, he adjusts uh, the the little uh, glasses on 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 his nose, um, and uh, uh, he looks between the two of you, kind of figure out that uh, yeah, you, the two of you are together, and he seems to immediately pass judgment on you for for that, Talix, so, um, just just from his expression. But then he says, "Yeah, yeah, welcome. Keep quiet. It's a library." Okay, thank you. If you need anything. I'm busy. And yeah. it'll just like float away. Hey, bye, Corn. Uh, do you guys need help looking for something? Or. Oh, wait, I yeah, have music for know. these towers. Well, the and... professor had a whole list of things Oop. he was going to look up. He was going to look up things about Jamuel, about Drow, about. Uh... Drow? Drow. Right? Didn't we what? mention that? We were going to try to find out about the. The elf and the in our dreams. Learn more about what they were. I just figured if we could find any knowledge that old, it would have to be among the elves. Oh. Uh, sure, I was going to do some research on Ladari and ferns, but I suppose that is probably <laughs> more pressing. Oh. You know, there is oh. a bounty on how to get them to reproduce. <laughs> well, that's true. There's there's a lot that we we're gonna look up, but uh. I figured we'd just be doing that over the coming days. Yeah, no, 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 you are right. I should probably prioritize the the dream thing and not the foreign thing. But uh, our friends here, I don't know if there's anything pressing you would want to find out, but... This hmm. could be something that happens more in the uh, background, as it were, while we were also pursuing <laughs> other ventures that you'd be more interested in. Brook, do these shelves hold books of dreams and sky stone? Ah, uh, I'm gonna be honest, I don't hate me Pontifex, but I'm not really that much of a regular when it comes to library, so I, I, I'd assume so. But uh, you're probably better off asking Pontifex. Libraries are not for everyone. I understand this. Uh, Pontifex, is there like... Or Windsor? Huh? Would we know as a group of like... Some areas of books for about dreams. Okay, uh, we can begin with that. Uh, uh, that's going to be Brooke and, and Tekka looking together. Mm -hmm. All right, Sounds one good. of you can roll an investigation check with advantage. You do that. All right. Your dreams. Yeah, I really needed that. <laughs> Thank you, you Brooke. You were you're a welcome. sniper of, of natural ones. Okay, so you're looking for... The two of you are looking for books about uh, dreams and... Sky stones. I'm drawing a blank. What are sky stones? Interpret that as you wish. Oh, okay! <laughs> he doesn't even know. He's just saying shit. <laughs> well, I, 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 I have an idea. Too. All right. Uh, yeah. so cool. um, <laughs> Tekka is too cool for the DM to this have any idea what's going on. Uh, okay. Dope. All right. So. Um... With a 17. Um, the two of you begin to um, find some books on the shelves and begin to like pile them up in your arms and find a little table where you can start going through them. Um, what languages do the both of you speak? Uh, Sylvan and Lernan, I think. And 
whatever the equi equivalent to giant is. Uh, let's just... Hmm. Oh, wow, yeah, I don't think I have a term for it. Uh, um, if I do, it's in my notes. I'll get back to you on that. Uh, what is... Uh, uh, Tekka speak? Plurnen and the Essen language. Okay, Plurnen and Essen fair. Oh, did um, I say Sylvan? I meant Elvish. Oh, yeah, they're different. Yep. Oh, so you don't nope. speak Sylvan. Wait, do you speak Sylvan? Was it Sylvan? Sylvan is Elvish like the, uh, Elvish is the like common for, for the not... Yeah, Sylvan is like the common language for... Yeah, it's a... Uh, Your races. Yeah. That's what Pontifex speaks. I don't speak Elvish, I speak Sylvan. Oh, uh, okay, I was, <clears throat> I was speaking Elvish, I'm sorry. My bad, my bad. Don't, uh, mm. don't apologize. Um, uh, how dare you? That's... I'm offended. <laughs> okay, Tekka and Brook. Um... All right, a brook ends up with a slightly larger pile of books uh, than Tekka does, uh, um, as uh, some literature here about uh, uh, research being conducted uh, on Ladaria is written just directly in Elvish, and you can see some that's written also in Sylvan. But um, besides, like recognizing a few words here and there, where it's like, oh, the word dream is on the cover of this one, but you're not even sure if it's like maybe just fiction or. Um, if it has any information but, uh, that you could be interested in, but it's, uh, it's Silva, and so you don't really get past that. Uh, um, still, with a few books in Plurin and a few in uh, Elvish, you just begin going through them um, over the course of uh, however long you're staying in here. I'm picturing, like, since you came here after dinner, you had dinner, like, as evening was coming. So what, do you spend maybe three hours in here for the night? As a group? Sure. Yeah, yep. sounds good. Let's, let's go with that. Uh, um, your search eventually uh, leads you to having set aside many. Uh, you have five books uh, that are about uh, research on the connection between dreams and uh, magic. Most of this uh, is not... Uh, um, not related to Lidaria. It's just about the magic the way it is conducted on, on Plurina. Um, and uh, the... Uh, Let's see, 17 uh, theories that the reason why elves uh, uh, cannot do divine magic uh, uh, is because they cannot dream. It, it, there is uh, like a belief that the, the magic of the gods is uh, um, given to people through dreams. Um, but as far as like dreams and Lidaria, um, there would really only be one book that kind of focuses on that. Uh, um, where similarly, there is uh, this deep belief that dreams uh, shape uh, reality through the form uh, of uh, magic. Uh, um, and... Uh, um, yeah, here it is. The general belief that uh, uh, the, the power of dreams can be so strong that uh, most troubles in your life uh, uh, can be slept away. As for sky stones... Mm -hmm. <laughs> there is one book in Azenfair. Um It's... Not an original, it's like uh, uh, page after page, there's translations from Azenfer into Sylvan. Um, so it appears that somebody copied originally something that was written in Azenfer and then provided a translation, so you're not holding the original book. Um, but you can just read the part in Azenfer that uh, uh, talks about how dragons uh, live on the moons. Um, and it is from the moons that they draw their power, and it channels this power 
through the gemstones uh, uh, that uh, grow out of their bodies. And the source of these gemstones, they're, they're called, uh, like, literally, the word translates from, like, moonstones. So, um, so, according to this book, the... All the all these gemstone dragons just they're born and they grow up on the moons. So, um, and if you ever were to find a gemstone on the ground, uh, it means that it fell from the moons. Brooke, I was told a story once. Okay. Someone found one of these stones. Fallen from the sky. It could have been from the moon we see. Mm -hmm. Did it sound believable? Not at first, this book and our sight of dragons, those experiences are changing. Ah, uh, see, um. Do you want to look for that person, or what exactly no. works your interest in that? I am looking for answers. That is all. Let's see, uh, well, if I can help you any in any way, let me know. These books so far have been decent, though, Brad. Yes, I am learning more about Plurna. <laughs> you know you can just ask, right? I know. Thank you. No worries. Mm. By the way, Tika, um, if we should ever split up, right, and you get into trouble, for, well, you know, uh, feel free to go back to that inn and just say you're affiliated with me. I mean, Kailu has seen you now, so he should know you, but if you say that, they should be willing to help you until we arrive. Tekka uh, just nods. All right, do you want to look for more books, or should we join the others? I have had enough. Whew. Good that you're saying that. <laughs> <laughs> Brooke immediately closes the books. <laughs> Starts putting them back. <laughs> uh, yeah, as you begin to put them back, it just a coroner flies by and we're like... Uh, pick up the same books that you touched and like rearrange them in a proper order and seems very just annoyed at the fact that he has to do this. Uh, you're pretty sure you got them right, uh, but... Hmm. Uh, Talix, uh, you were off to find... Did I find uh, Pontifex's books? Uh... They... Are available in the public side of the library. Yes, there is. Uh, um, there is a lot of books <laughs> that he wrote. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, there is. There is a sixteen of them. All right. After making a quick look around to make sure I'm not being watched, I am going to look see if there's any smuts in the area. <laughs> Just out of curiosity. <laughs> Damn Acorn, he does this to taunt me, I swear. <laughs> Did you say you're looking for smut? Yeah. I heard you right. Yeah, is there smut? 
Roll an investigation check. <laughs> All right. Seventeen. What do I, what do we got? Talix, you begin scouring every corner of this library. Um, <laughs> no, I'm just looking in the area around the Pontifex's books. <laughs> we specifically around Pontifex's books. Yeah, yeah. He mentioned or that. What Pontifex said earlier. Oh my God, that's why this is happening. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No, there isn't. <laughs> hmm. I'll shrug and then uh, I'll look for the one that he mentioned about the wolf. The 16th volume. The wolf yeah. and the arcane races of Plurina. Wait, so there's at least 16 volumes specifically about the wolf? No, uh, the 16th volume in his collection oh, okay. is the one that is about the wolf. Right. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna pick that up and kind of just read through it a bit. Okay. As you go through the book and you, uh, you, you recognize mm -hmm. the way that Pontifex uh, writes about things, uh, um, but it's also a little strange. Mm. This book appears to be a bit less um, compared to the way he talks, compared to everything you know about the professor. Um, this wolf, uh, this wolf, this book is uh, a little problematic. Um, it no. as you professor. <laughs> As you go through it, uh, uh, it appears that this, it, it just, um, it hasn't aged well. Um, there's, there's a lot about it that just comes off as, like, somewhat racist uh, and derogatory. Against who? Um, against uh, the, anything involving, like, the... Uh, outside the Pantheon, as it is uh, currently, um, as, as it is uh, nowadays, and uh, just also, uh, correct me, Matt, if I'm, if I'm wrong, but also just in general towards Moonwatch uh, uh, races. Hmm. So this is very, like, anti-wolf. Uh, it's then. not anti-wolf, but uh, it refers to it as the false god of the arcane races. That would be a, 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 a kind of anti-wolf point. That would specifically <laughs> point, yeah, jump out to you is it? It was referred to as false god in that book, uh, which I'm sure that like the wolf has come up before in conversation with the professor, and he has never said anything remotely like that in any of your conversations with him. It is unusually. Um, normally, his work, uh, his opinions are very unbiased, uh, um, but. The approach for this one just doesn't feel like it. Right. This book seems significantly less objective. It seems less educational and more like, uh, I don't know. Like opinions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this book seems slightly opinionated, which is completely counter to everything you've ever experienced with anything else he's ever written. He's a super objective person, but this time it's subjective. Uh, yeah, it's Alex will stop reading it after a bit and just put it back and maybe look for a different book on the wolf. Something written in Elvish, maybe. <laughs> Talix. Talix doesn't speak Sylvan? No, only Elvish. It's just Pontifex, okay. Yeah, um, can I ask for another investigation check? Okay. 22. Okay. Um, there's plenty of uh, books about the wolf. Uh, um, 
many of them written in Sylvan, many of them written in Elvish, a few in Plurinan, uh, but they, they mainly appear to be um, works from, uh, you know, Elinarden uh, works. And uh, they're going to keep you occupied for the rest of the evening. Um, you're going to get the... Um, the knowledge about the wolf that we have already discussed about. Uh, uh, some of them are uh, little tales about the uh, confrontations between the wolf and the other uh, gods, the ones that are recognized by the Jade Council. Uh, and most of the time the wolf uh, is... Uh, the god that in these tales is, is the wise one, the one that sees the bigger picture, the one that uh, uh, makes the right decisions. Uh, and it, it, you begin to like separate the various books. So some of them, it, it's it's clear that it's less about objectivity and more about you know establishing that the wolf is the better or the uh, the real god compared to everyone else. And um, you're uh, as the hours pass, you get a good feel for which books are like more. Um, uh, just better reads, more uh, less subjective reads, uh, um, with Pontifex's book ending up uh, in the pile of the um, of the biased uh, tomes. Is there any particular information about the wolf that you would like uh, um, to know about? Uh, mostly, just wanting to learn about the general lore. Legends is fine. And okay. I don't know, the, maybe if there that was would any be all the specific uh, history that people know. Those, that, that would be the, the knowledge that we have talked about um, outside of yeah. the session. Okay. Someone's cat is very upset. Yeah, um, I need to call a break and feed them lunch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Maya is letting me know that it's time to, to feed them. Uh, well, here, I'll, I'll go ahead and do that, and so you can talk about Pontifex's books. Oh, well, I still want to call a break because I also need to use the bathroom. Oh, cool, cool. so you want to do it right now? Mm-hmm. Sure. All right. All right. Okay. Meow, meow. I'll see you in a few minutes. Yeah, it was a it was a passion uh -huh. piece, you could say, but like in a bad way. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm? We're talking what is? about the, the this slam piece on the wolf that he wrote <laughs> and when he wrote it, and it would have been right about... Right about 884. I know, I feel like he would have written this after he received his title. I, d I don't think that it would have helped. So he probably wrote it between 884 and 934, somewhere in those f in that 50-year span. And yeah, basically the the important thing to that I gleaned from that was that it was right after the death of Akhenoth. Yeah, it was, it'd be very shortly after the death yeah. of Akhenoth. Right. Yeah, Which not a I think makes piece uh, to helps anyone. it make a bit more sense. Yeah, I think Talix would have noted that. Okay. Since he's so good at investigation. <laughs> <laughs> so he is. Sid okay. asked me about the. the like, Do you actually have these books? And I was like, Yeah, we have all sixteen, like with descriptions and full titles. <laughs> Thor went there when I was making this character, and <laughs> that we have a Google Doc that you and I both referenced. <laughs> for all this crap about this old character. <clears throat> Here it is. <laughs> um yeah, oh it's it's been delightful. Um I I love that I have all these details that I can reference. I'm just always afraid of like getting them wrong if it's off off my memory, so I'm always like yeah. just going back to it. <laughs> okay. Uh I think uh yeah, we just have Pontifex's uh, time in the library to left to explore. What is he up to? Uh, yeah, yeah, we can keep these kind of brief. Um, he is looking for like a like a farmer's almanac kind of thing, like an agricultural mm -hmm. uh, work on on ferns or Ladarian ferns or that kind of thing. Okay. Um. So that's one. Uh, he is uh trying to find any works like biographical or autobiographical of um the uh what was his name the 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 cleric that that did the leaf thing that met us outside of the of aria whatever that cleric's name was um i have it safe oh um Flip. wow it, it took me a moment to like understand um yeah the one who like sent us the the hide and the run leaves outside of our uh, aria mm-hmm 
uh, and, and Will. And Will Twilight Sun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so him and uh, and uh, Gulborgok, those those two people in specific, and that's probably like all he has time to find. You want information on Enwild and on and on Gul? Yeah, on Gulborgok. Yeah. That's the fox person, right? right. Yes, the, the arch cleric, arch -cleric yeah. of the fox. Right, right, right. So I figure his would be more likely Her to exist. Yeah. Okay. All right, I will take an investigation check. Do you want individual ones or just one, one overarching? One? We'll just we'll we will only do one. Talix got the next round for the smut. <laughs> uh, and can I guidance myself for this? Yeah. It seems fairly fitting. Give cool. yourself a little prep talk, and you try I to forgot. remember where. <laughs> oh. I forgot you could do that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if I rolled and... a 20, would I have found the smut? <laughs> I guess we will never know. <laughs> that would have uh, made it a 20. Yeah, am I content with a 22? No, use your inspiration. Yeah, I'm thinking I might actually. <laughs> Uh, is inspiration before or after you know if it's a success? Uh, these inspirations were, we're, we're doing after. Oh, wait, a success. Okay. Uh, no, yeah, it's, yeah. it's after the roll, but before, you know, if he succeeded. Mm. Okay, yeah, 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 I'll, I'll spend one. I'll blow an inspiration on this. Why not? Amazing. I want higher than 11. Come on. Oh! oh. 19, a 30. <laughs> it's a 30. Oh PowerPoint God. inspiration. <gasps> okay. Whoa. It's a 30 total? A 30 total. This is okay. my second 30 investigation check of the campaign. The first one mm -hmm. found this fucking rock. <laughs> <laughs> this, this the you were so happy about uh, it's mainly your knowledge of Sylvain that gets you exactly what you want. Uh, um, as uh, the majority of the books in the library are found, uh, um, are, uh, well, it's not a majority, majority, uh, what's the word for, like? Plurality. It's not, yeah, it's not the most, but it is the largest category. Okay, um, sure. <laughs> um, well, yeah. The, just a large number of books in your in Sylvan, and you're you're very uh, you're very familiar with the language, and you just begin to like set aside this and that and this and that. Um, on the topic of the ferns, you finally confirm once and for all that the particular ferns uh, that uh, uh, you have come you have come to know that are grown uh, in uh, in Cleon. Uh, and just mass producing the swamps around it. Uh, they reproduce through spores, and uh, ferns that uh, reproduce through spores are known as sporophytes. There you go. Uh, that particular uh, kind of fern is called. Uh, um, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Eh. It's a white dawn root. And it comes in different varieties. The plant itself is not white, but um, when it grows on the water, if you pick it up and if you flip it over, the leaves on the bottom part are white. Ah. So the part that's like in contact with the water. And uh, there's different varieties that all from above they all look the same, but once you pick them up and flip them around, they, they come in different colors and they have different flavors. There's one of them, uh, the black one, that is straight up uh, po poisonous. Um, not too much, but you know, you shouldn't feed it to cattle, like, like most uh, of this fern is, uh, is usually for. And animals have their own preference on which color they prefer to eat. Nope. Is there any, any like indication of which of these, which of the types of ferns are like the most nutritious for cattle? Uh, the white one. 
Okay. Got it. I've now written it in full caps on my short-term to-do list. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, mm, 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 information. Information, despite your thorough search, um, <laughs> there is hardly, there's just like a couple of mentions of Enwild. Um, mm -hmm. He, from your understanding, especially if like, uh, um, oh god, you do know what race he is, right? Yeah, 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 yeah you guys know. Um, yep. For as exceptional as Enwild is, uh, he... The information on, like, people uh, that are not straight-up members of the Jade Council is just very scarce. Uh, you even go up in one of the floors where the rest of the party will not be able to follow you, but you as a member of the, uh, the Order of Scribes, you're allowed to. Um, and that's where you mainly fo focus your search a little bit. And ultimately, the, the information on Gulborgak is going to be far more... Um, far more available to you uh, than on Enwild, but uh, uh, fr from Enwild you learn exactly what you already know um, about the fact that he is one of uh, so few documented um, people born with uh, divine powers. Uh, um, the Basically, uh, the only exception to uh, the distinction be between divine and arcane, where uh, divine is never something you're born with, but given by the gods. But uh, uh, in the case of Azimars, they are given to powers at birth. Uh, um, mm. So the, the the main reason why you find his name anywhere is because of that. Like it records uh, of people um, of Azimars uh, uh, born across the ages. Uh, and uh, sure enough, he's you know towards the bottom of the list, the most recent, uh, um, the second most recent Azimar to have been uh, uh, recorded. Uh... Information on Gulborgak is uh, far more available. Uh, a lot easier to locate. You just set aside a bunch of books. Uh, and kind of like uh, how Talix did, but in reverse. Um, where uh, Talix kept finding books that like praised the, uh, uh, praised the, the, the wolf. Uh, you end up finding a lot of books that uh, try to tear down uh, the Jade Council and its members. And you, you, you end up... Uh, um, trying to locate the ones that are like as objective as possible as opposed to the ones that are clearly just trying to smear the reputation um like most of these books are clearly just not just written by elves but also just meant for other elves to read and mm -hmm. uh, uh expand upon these uh, these already uh derogatory rumors um mm -mm. are there any uh, any of these rumors <clears throat> in particular that kind of jump out to me? Anything that seems, like, relevant? As a part uh, of... Uh, information. As part of you finding information on Gulborgak, there, uh, most of, there isn't, like, any tome that's dedicated to her. It's all about the Jade Council. Um, and as you, like, just expand your search a little bit, uh, a lot of these books, even the ones that are more... Um, that are less subjective... Um, do seem to share tales of animosity between uh, uh, between the gods of the Jade Pantheon and also between the members of the council itself. Um, at first, it felt like just additional rumors that were just smearing them, but then it, it appears there is like actual evidence uh, um, of this having taken place many, many times. Uh, uh, over the, the course of uh, Digit Council's existence. Um, yeah, he's taking notably, notes. Notably, Ghoul is never at the center of any of these. Uh, the Fox, however, is... Uh, there is just plenty of tales uh, uh, about uh, the... the shenanigans that the Fox uh, seemingly uh, keeps getting himself into. Um... Like almost on par with uh, the the Tresim, 
Um, but whereas the Tresim is, you know, tricksy, um, but overall generally good-hearted, um, the fox is very often depicted as, uh, um, how do I put this, as an asshole um, that none of the other gods <laughs> like. Um, you rolled a 30, right? Yeah. Yep. Okay. I know, it's, it's ridiculous, but this There's... is what I'm built for. There is one tale in particular that uh, uh, catches your eye, as uh, you've uh, you've heard uh, um, bits and pieces of information about the fox lately um, that appear in this tale, and it's it's um, there are many tales about the gods uh, um, that are shared in you know a fable-like format, uh, um, but. Uh, despite the despite this uh, uh, the way they are told, uh, they are treated like they are truthful. Like this is what happened, even if they are like kind of so often in a child friendly uh, kind of tale. Mm -hmm. um, and you come across just a, a very peculiar uh, tale of how the fox came to gain the knowledge of the entire world. And the story starts, as you know it, about the fox wanting to reach the highest branch of Vakanath. Um, but where this tale diverges a little bit from the one you know is that he talks about a fruit that was growing at the very top, uh, on the highest branch of the divine tree. And uh, um, that's, what the fo that's what the fox was aiming for. He wanted to eat that fruit. And as cunning as the fox uh, was, uh, he couldn't find a way to climb all the way up. He made his way over the years, higher and higher, but there was just a spot where um, n nothing he could do could bring him any higher. Um, and that's when the fox convinced uh, the wyvern to help him out. Um, he told him about this fruit uh, that uh, most others wouldn't know about. And he said uh, that uh, if they found it, they could share it. The wyvern himself had um, a bit of a self-esteem issue. Um, unlike all the other proper dragons, the wyvern could not breathe fire. And the fox promised that uh, if they could find this fruit and eat it and learn all the knowledge of the world, the wyvern would learn how to make his own fire again. Uh, thus, the wyvern agreed to give the fox a ride and flew him up towards the highest branches of Vakanath. And even as they soared above the tree, they still had to locate the fruit. Um, and that's where... The wyvern let the fox uh, uh, rest on one of the branches, and they se they separated to go look for the fruit. Uh, but the fox knew exactly what branch to look for and went straight there and found uh, the fruit and ate it all by himself. Um, this betrayal signified the end of any friendship between the wyvern and the fox. Uh, but the fox, despite... Uh, uh, despite betraying the wyvern's trust, still um, shared with the wyvern uh, knowledge of how to make his own fire. And uh, that is how the wyvern came to be the deity of the forge, and uh, um, which uh, uh, this knowledge came, came to be in the form of like machines. Uh, um, and uh, uh, yeah, the, the, and alchemy. So the creation of uh, the fire, the wyvern cannot breathe it, but uh, he can now craft it and use it mm. to make things. Um, well, that's the gist of the tale. Okay. Uh, the, just yeah. the fox is, you know, painted as this like selfish uh, person that just uh, uh, entity um, that you know put himself before even his. Uh, uh, even before the, his friend the wyvern. And he kind of made up for it by still giving the wyvern what he wanted, but he still uh, betrayed him and didn't let him have a bite of the fruit. Okay. Um, I have one one final question. Uh, this, this book, specifically the one that's like giving information on the fox that I didn't even know as like a professor of theology. Like, right, this is all... This thing with the wyvern is is completely new information to me. 
Mm-hmm. You know, you know that uh, the wyvern is is you know as uh, the deity of the domain of the forge is associated mm-hmm. with like craft, uh, and a lot of gnomes, uh, those who focus on building new inventions, often do worship the wyvern in particular. Uh, but yeah, you didn't know that the knowledge that the wyvern has of fire and of creation comes from the infinite knowledge of the fox. Uh, this book, is it dated? Uh, like, this book... is this book, a really old book, or is this like... This particular um, book is dated to only 56 years ago. Um, okay. But it doesn't appear to be a first edition. Okay, and is there an author name? Like, is there a name that, that this is credited to? Uh, yes. Spot. No, that's fine. Um, this is, uh, this was made, uh, written by an elf. Uh, um, and, uh, s- you rolled a 30. Surprisingly, the name doesn't bring any bell whatsoever. Uh, the name is Respen. Okay, perfect. Yeah, he's uh, the professor has written a whole bunch of notes, uh, and uh, uh, and it's specifically of this person's name, and then yeah, uh, is there like a possibility for like a brief search of like is this person alive? Basically, just looking for like an obituary, like a, a simple like a yes no or or you don't know. Um, a brief search at a library for the remaining of the evening uh, uh, provides uh, no information whatsoever about a man named the Vespen Verlamin. Perfect. Nothing about his life or about his uh, potential death. Perfect, perfect. Um, I think Pontifex's senses would be like uh, going off and he feels like perhaps that's just not his real name. Uh, um, mm-hmm. But. Still, you'd imagine you'd, you'd think you'd find something, um, and just the library is suspiciously empty of any other mention of him. Oh, yeah, perfect. Okay, if Paper's interested in anything, we'll just go over over it with uh, um, with Austin uh, after Alex the session. Would be willing to help him find uh, uh, like. A book about some sort of great hero or something, if he'd be interested. <laughs> okay, yeah. Um, yeah, we'll just see what he what he wants to do uh, <clears throat> after I speak with him again. But no books on witchcraft, though. No. <laughs> Noted. <laughs> okay. All right. You're beginning to uh, to feel tired. the The idea that there is uh, a warm and comfortable bed waiting for you. Um, Especially after you ended up skipping your your stay in Aria, uh, you just been on the road for a while, and then the the, the boat trip, um, that just sounds very tempting. Yeah. Um. Yes, it was. <laughs> it was. Yeah, it's a cool legend. Yeah, Talix will be eager to get back and compare notes if everyone's cool with that, or... Uh, um, no. Yeah, since you're supposed to not make too much noise, uh, um, you could, like, be doing this on the way to the tavern. Oh, no, and I figured, the end, yeah, uh, I figured we'd do that once we mm-hmm. got back. Yeah. yeah. Uh, of course, the... the non lewdly named the Dragon Wagon is uh, waiting for you. <laughs> Uh, and you have uh, the, the largest room uh, um, you've stayed in so far, uh, all to yourselves. Oh goodness! Um, there, there is plenty. There's like an extra three beds in here that you're not even using, um, 
and they have been pushed aside a little bit uh, uh, so there's just more uh, like free room for you to wander around uh, uh, one bed is very visibly brook sized uh, uh, another one also particularly big and another that's more like children sized uh. you're free to share any information you would like with each other uh, yeah, Pontifex is going to note dump on Tetalix specifically. Yeah, uh, so. and make a pretty big note that uh, that I basically didn't find anything on Goldborgok, like with involvement of anything, and especially like with all the slander being thrown around, like Goldborgok was just seemingly absent from like all of it, right? Mm hmm. Yeah. Well, Which is this strange. is relatively recent happening. We don't even know. I'm not even sure what news has gotten around Plurna as far as the goings on in the Jade Council. I don't know if this is being kept quiet or if it everyone's talking about it. It's just strange to find so little about so prominent a figure. Sure, had oh. I dedicated any time to looking into the, the other uh, arch clerics, it would have been more fruitful. Goldborgok uh, is seemingly a ghost. Well, it could... Be. Oh, okay. Sorry, I'm putting on a tavern music. It could just be that... Uh... <laughs> he mentions a ghost and then... Boss <laughs> <laughs> <Pass> music. <laughs> oh god. Not the right time to be taking this. Uh... this right now. You know, as far as historical accounts and whatnot, they tend to focus on major players during the war and stuff like that. Modern arch clerics. I haven't seen exciting times so much. Especially a younger one like Goldborg Hawk that has an orc, you know. But, uh... It, it, there could be more to it. It would be interesting to see what, uh... What's been written about some of the others, like Bari and Thar. But what you found out about the uh, the fox, that's very interesting. I've never heard such a complete version of that legend. I mean, I only heard a little bit of it from, uh, from Inwald. Yeah, I've never heard of this uh, expansion either. It is, a, upon reading it, I've made a strange realization that my stories of each of the deities tend to not involve one another. Which doesn't make a whole lot of sense now that this one has come out. You would think there would be more involvement between them. And this frankly seems plausible. It certainly makes me want to learn more about the fox. Assuming that this is... This is real. This is written by an elf, right? And we don't know I where. assume so. But I did my research on this person, uh, Respin Verlamen, but I uh, found the Bumkis, so I am assuming it is a pen name, a pseudonym. It's strange that nothing I've read during my time with the council, but during the, you know, the, the church is under the council. Don't worry, where frankly, does this person get their information? Feeling shame at being a professor of theology and not knowing such a theological you know, expansion of a legend. Well, I've heard some interesting things about the wolf, but, uh... Uh, it's... Nothing on that level. Just some, you know, folklore. It's been fun, but, uh... Probably not very productive. What about the rest of you? Hmm. Uh... Well, I did find books about sky stones that Tekka was looking for? I Bystones. have learned little. One believes dreams are the source of divine magics. Another believes our moons are the nesting place of dragons. I... Talix has heard that much before, right? Yeah, yeah, he has. Uh, About the the moons. Um, I know some Ladarians worship the moons. 
or maybe the dragons in them. It's actually not clear. But uh, I, I'd heard of them and not heard of the Lady of the Land, so I think it's fairly popular for them to do so. Have they spoken with a dragon to confirm it? Good question. I mean, if if our dragon spoke to the Ladarian dragons, then surely some Ladarian people have had that privilege, right? Perhaps so. There's a big open question. There's this agreements that Ladarians seem to have made with the dragons about staying out of the skies and the... I wonder what all that means. Is perhaps some connection to this being uh, how did they put it? Uh, the Zasporic Peninsula is for the the rejects? The More or less, ones yeah. deemed not worthy or something of the sort. Sounded a sort of like a jail. Uh, where they were banished, so perhaps it is to prevent uh, prevent access to the mainland? I don't know. What what you read about dreams being the source of divine power, I mean well clearly that can't be all there is to it for my in my case, but uh Well in the, you know there are elf clerics of the wolf. Right? God. No. Oh yeah, yeah, never mind, you're right. There are there are zero clerics of the wolf, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, That's the main clerics. reason why the Jade Council doesn't recognize the wolf as a real entity. Mm -hmm. Um because you know, this is a universe where gods are can be proven to exist because there are people who get their powers and hear their voices in the in their dreams. And there is no evidence of the wolf doing this. Thus, the wolf, uh, according to the Jedi Council, is not a god. Either doesn't exist, or is, you know, just some other entity that is not a deity. Well, I think we should keep, uh, maybe doing this every, well, every day that we have some spare time, and... Go to the library the and read up on gods? Well, just while we have spare time, but in the meantime, I think we had some other things we wanted to get done here. Oh, yeah. uh, speaking of, uh, during my research onto the, the fox and whatever, I found the answer to the ferns. Oh, yes. interesting. Yes, uh, the thing for the dwarf woman in uh, Cleon, uh, the money thing. I found the answer, perhaps. Wait, so someone already discovered it? Uh, apparently, it was in the library uh, too. You know, I had to roll a thirty to find it, but <laughs> I found something. <laughs> it, it's it's pretty in depth. Uh, I know that uh, the ferns are different varieties, and that the kind that they want in specific is called the white on root, and that they reproduce through spores. I learned a new word for sporophytes. That is a new one. But yeah, I learned a whole bunch of the stuff. So I, I suppose maybe now I have a letter to send. I can go to the, the mail place and uh, send a letter to the world point to her and uh, maybe get the uh, money sent through the mail. There was a bounty, I remember. So, you know, the uh, funds. Shouldn't it go and to whoever offered solved. the book? Did I what? Shouldn't it go to whoever <laughs> offered the book? Uh, it goes to the one that found the bounty. <laughs> 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 well, the answers are always there it, 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 the credit does not always go to the where the answer was located but to the one who found it oh this is why researchers don't get paid no, I, I have no intentions of taking uh, credit for this discovery I might even uh, mention the name of the book and the author and some such had I remembered to write it down but uh, of course you know I am the one who did the legwork I had to come all the way to Simleilon to find this thing. All right. So, you know, not to interrupt all of this important mumbo-jumbo, but uh, money. It's important. <laughs> I'm glad we learned something. If I would say, well, you know, maybe the the cattle of Cleon will uh, thank me for it. Uh, this is maybe apparently we'll the healthiest one. Some of them are poisonous. Uh, we can avoid that whole debacle. 
Right, now we know which one's which. We do. And maybe we'll, uh, you know, need to start a farm here someday. Yeah, you know, in the event that we are making our way through a swamp, as we so often find ourselves doing, mm. uh, we know which of these things are edible and which ones are not. Taka, your tree. I don't think it's too far from here now. No. I wish to go see it. I do as well. I... I wonder, maybe it'll also be a gateway for... for us to meet the self again. Or at least, maybe... I wonder if I can dream there. It, it was a tempting prospect for me too. But of course, we we want to find your your priest as well. But uh, yeah, I have my own uh, selfish wishes, I guess. <clears throat> Are we planning on doing that tomorrow? Place. I think we should. We have some some free time. We can uh, go there and come back here, and this can be our base of operations until we figure out our next move, and we should uh, try to try to resolve everyone's personal quests. I agree. I would like to meet a friend of mine here. Uh, Telex, I'm assuming, considering that we have taken a boat, I'm assuming you didn't have any time to find any flowers, right? Oh, uh, yes, but... We can definitely do that. Starting now. <laughs> I mean, worst case, we can just buy some flowers. So, I, I mean, depending have... on when we're back from, well, Our I'd first... assume that if oh, we go oh. to find the tree first, we, on the way back, right, we could pick some flowers. Yes, if we're going to a woods, I, I will use every skill I, I have at my disposal to find you the best, most beautiful, magical flowers for your friend, right? <laughs> yeah. Cool. Huh. Mm -hmm. So, letter first, then we go look for the tree. Do we... Winter, remind me, do we know how, how, much, how much days it takes to get there? To the tree? Question. Yeah. You don't have a specific location for the tree. Um, oh. You, um... What are the rumors say? You know the area. Here, let me put this away. It didn't give us yeah, any sort of... Was it a dwarf Take a talk to it? I think he said... It was a gnome. Tower. It was a gnome. Okay, got it. Yeah, I thought it gave us some sort of general idea. Uh, yeah, you know, it's in the circle. Wait, no. Ah, uh, yeah, it's over no, here. That's... The circle is a different thing. You're right, you're right. Uh, yeah, you have the general direction that was straight west of Simulian on. But we don't um, know if, is it actually two days or is it iffy? A little iffy, but yeah, about two days probably. Could be one, could be three. Okay, well, if we do that, we can be back in a week, which... It's fine with my plans. Sounds good to me. I'm really excited for a chance to study the Itarava. And maybe, you know, have good communication with him. <laughs> we... <sighs> <laughs> I mean, if we treated their birds well and... Well, we didn't entirely. Would you be willing to be back up for my uh, selfish expedition to try to meet the Atarva? I mean, did you actually think you were going to do that alone? So I'm going to shred you into pieces. We go together, attempt to make amends. Maybe they bring flowers for them too. 
Actually, maybe food would be better. A new bird? <laughs> uh, well, from what the bird explained to me, oh yeah, I don't know if a replacement would really work. What food for their birds? No chicken, then I guess. <laughs> no. Well, hmm. You might eat it. You could research this. Oh yeah, <laughs> let's let's look that up. That's that'll be my next. Oh god! Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like you'll be in Simlier on a while. Huh. All right. So tomorrow, letters go to the tree. Then whenever we're back. Cool. Sounds like a plan to me. Uh, what is the first thing you're doing? Tomorrow? I think Pontifex wanted to write a letter. Right? For for his bounty. Yeah, he might as well. Uh, okay. We are just a short distance away. Let the world point to their job. And the flowers, you'll be looking for them on the way to the tree? Is that right? Yeah, yeah probably, the probably around that area, assuming that it's going to be in some sort of magical woods, as I imagine in my head. <laughs> yeah, just in a time span that they aren't completely gone bad once we're back in Simli alone. Uh, you may probably want to pick them, like, yeah, once you're there, as your, like, you know, last thing before you leave. Um mm -hmm. I'm gonna look for doesn't a flower forest Talix, biome. Doesn't Talix have a way of like preserving them a little bit over time? Yes. Yeah. Yes, um, so there is, yeah, there, there, there is no risk of them going bad. All right. Uh, do you keep watch during the night, or do you trust this, these, uh, um, this location? Talix really does not want to have to wake up in the middle of the night again. <laughs> uh. I, mean, I probably still really would too. because mechanical things. Yeah, I trust the location, but I would still keep an eye out. Okay, can I just either take first or last watch this time? <laughs> fine by me. It is fine. And and perhaps you take first, I will take last. Okay. We can do Talix, Brook, uh, Tekka. Um, how does Tekka feel about staying in the inn, by the way? There was I a whole see. conversation about how, like, the this place was chosen specifically because Brooke knew that an, um, the person who runs it would not give you or any of the others in the in the group any trouble. Right. Yeah. Before you got here, we had a whole thing with this this innkeep guy. Brooke is kind of a celebrity for this dude who gave <laughs> us, like a free room charge and gave us like a big room, and he just seems like a homie. He is my homie. They appear to be like not co workers, but to be in some kind of business together. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think that conversation in the library, he will probably be uh, in the room. All right. It's this city's a little crowded, too, so there might not be a good outdoor option. <laughs> if you want to avoid people, I don't know what you're. Exactly what your reasoning is for. <laughs> but yeah. All right. Sounds okay. Good. I will be taking uh, um, everyone's perception check right now, and we will be carrying these through also your journey towards uh, the the tree. No, oh, no. <laughs> if you want to like, die, if please. you want any like bonuses or something, that apply them oh. now. Oh, right. Guidance, right? Yeah, uh -huh. guidance for sure. It's a D4. Yeah, it's a, it's a check. Is that a natural oh, no! one from Sid? <gasps> no! Do we all get guidance? Uh, It wouldn't really make sense because we wouldn't be awake to give you the guidance while it was your watch. Yeah. yeah. We could only well, really... I'm... I'm... <laughs> Fair enough. Wait, how do I... Uh... Okay. Did with a permanent nat one perception. <laughs> Lots of seventeens from Talix today. I am missing Pontifex. Uh, sorry. 
Uh, can we use guidance? Talon, yeah. can I? Okay. <laughs> Ugh. Okay. It, uh, I will probably be taking one from Squeak uh, starting from next session, but for today it is fine. Uh, for the night does go by. Um, without any of you noticing anything out of the out of the ordinary. It for some of you it can be a little jarring that um there is quite a lot of activity in the city even at night. Um the the uh the dragon wagon itself stays open uh, throughout uh, um not all the way to the first uh, hours of the morning, but for most of the night. Um, however, your your fancy room uh, is pleasantly soundproof, uh, and you're just getting uh, very little of everything that's going on downstairs, a few floors beneath yours. Uh, but outside the window, the number of people that are still walking in the streets even late at night, uh, the illumination that, uh, um, that keeps the city uh, alive, even after the sun is set, uh, it's it's a lot. Uh, you can Good see the towers. Never sleeps. <laughs> uh, you can see the towers uh, during the night, the ones that, that fly over your heads. Um, as you, you can see the the, the shimmering light, uh, uh, just that that keeps them afloat, and occasionally one. Uh, um, wait, wait, wait. Uh, escatorium, esca escalatorium. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> <good. totally laughs> extending yeah. downward and bringing someone up or uh, bringing someone down from the buildings um, you can see them shimmering in the, dis in the distance uh, um, you've noticed uh, uh, when this has happened uh, this is after <laughs> okay, then it's Pontifex, then in the morning as he looks outside, he can see uh, in the buildings directly um, ahead and around uh, uh, your inn. Um, many of the buildings uh, and many of the towers in this city, they have these large bells uh, uh, on top of the rooftops. And even though Pontifex can see them move uh, by the time that dawn comes around, uh, he doesn't hear the noise. Unless he sticks his head out of the window. Um, there is one bell atop of the dragon wagon itself. And while he's inside the room, he doesn't hear it. But when he puts his head out of the window, there it is. All of them just celebrating the arrival, uh, the rising of the sun in the morning. Um, uh, bells ringing across the city. Uh, not disturbing the sleep of anyone. Um, for only those outside do hear them. Oh, God. I think actually in the morning, uh, whenever he sticks his head out the window and has like the gonging of the bell, I think it, it rings a bell in his head, quote unquote. Uh, and he suddenly remembers um, the the 10% off coupon for the upcoming Aradova <laughs> wizard show in mm -hmm. Simley and he's like, oh, oh shit. Uh, <laughs> 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 That's a good thing. He just has a big oh shit moment. It's a discount for uh, an entrance ticket to like spectate yeah. the competition. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the competition takes place on the 15th of Mundal, which is the next month. It's an entire month away. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Okay, let's shoot. <laughs> is, that, <laughs> is that is that is that good? Um you don't want to have anything to do with it? Oh I'm gonna have something to do with it. But... Okay. Um you, Yeah, Mundo. The, the yeah, month of the fox. It is almost exactly wait, alright. Today is the thirteenth uh, and the competition will take place on the summer solstice, which is the fifteenth of the next month. So it's just over a month away. We have time. <laughs> Honestly, it seems like most of the party has specific ties to this place. And this is like pretty central on the Zasper Peninsula, so and we have an inn that's like favorable to us, so I can see this being kind of like a home base. 
there's a big ass library. There's a college for my scribes here. It's all elf friendly. Brooke is a homie with everyone. They seem <laughs> to be fine with Tekka. Uh, well, uh, the inn is fine with Tekka. We have one person who's fine with Tekka. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but Tekka has been getting like, you know, the, the usual stairs. Uh, I was describing this at the beginning where it's like, uh, um, by comparison, Cleon and Vera were kind of fine for Tekka. Colonies he's been in before those are more like this one, um, where, you know, people will openly just avoid you, change side of the street to avoid, like, walking near you. Um, the, 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 the inn providing an exception, the one that Brooke chose. Mm -hmm. Got Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Early in the morning, <laughs> breakfast <laughs> is included with your uh, with your bed, um, and you're not renovating the rooms for tonight, right? Because you'll be on the road. No, <clears throat> if if um, Kylo is there, I would let him know that we'll be gone for like a week, so just for so he knows for if he sees the fur bulk guy. Keep him distracted for about a week. <laughs> <laughs> or we potentially know. set something up so we can meet in a week. Okay. Right. Um, Give him our, our world point information. Kylo has oh, actually ready information for you, Baruch. Ooh. Um, where he I has managed to... Like, <laughs> he has managed <laughs> to, to, to hear from people who have seen this, uh, this for a bug. Um, so he says, all right, um, the guy is still in the city. Uh... He's a man, dark hair, dark brown, almost black. Uh, that's all I got. I don't have a name yet, but he he appears to be still around. People are um, got somebody who saw him as as um, as early as uh, last uh, yesterday morning. Well, if he's a four ball in the town, it is should stand out like a sore thumb. Really, if you stick around the city for a day or two, I'm sure you'll find him without trouble. But he hasn't been anywhere near this, uh, uh, anywhere near my establishment. All right, thank you, Kalu. I'll keep looking around, listening. People, you know how people enjoy talking uh, in front of a, a good meal. Mm -hmm. Oh, or is that? <laughs> oh. All right. Thanks for the information, and everything goes well. See you in a week. I'll make sure the room is, uh, uh, will be free by the time you're back. Same one, yeah? All of you? Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, stay, stay safe, Brooke. Oh. You too. Oh. Um, have you, have you spoken with, uh, any of the Phantoms since you, you, you come back? Uh. I haven't yet. I have reached out um, per post or per mail or per letters <laughs> <laughs> uh, towards Cass and Brunolf, but I haven't had the time yesterday. So I assume if they're around, it will be in a week. Right. Uh, Casimir is uh, in the city right now. Oh. I'm not sure for how much longer, but I, I figured I'd let you know. I don't Do think you know Brunoff is. Staying? Well, I'm sure you'll find him, you know, at your... And, like, oh, okay. he, he glances at, at the group of people. Yeah, oh. yeah. He nods. All right. Oh, before we leave, while we are on the mention of uh, reserving the room, uh, can we perhaps plan to have this room reserved for us uh, in about a month? A month from now. Oh, yes, for the solstice. Oh, we... <sighs> and it starts, like, going through the ledger. You know, this, uh... At this time of the year, we're completely booked. But... Could perhaps make an exception for new friends. Do you get a lot of uh, non-elves coming in this time of year? Uh, 
Um, as he's like busy going through the ledger, uh, yeah, that is when we see the most uh, tourists uh, in the city. Um, still mostly elves, but uh, some people are interested about how we celebrate certain things. Of course, the solstice is a celebration for everyone, regardless of uh, species and country. Uh, I uh, think... You have all of your bookings for that time uh, right there, yes? Yeah. You perhaps have a booking under the name Eredova? <laughs> oh, dear. I, I think we're not quite fancy enough for the Eredova family, my friend. Sure, sure, sure. Just, just double-checking, you know? Due diligence. <laughs> I believe they're, they actually have their own tower here. I don't doubt it. <laughs> hmm. I know that but, uh, is. Yes, if the reservation is possible, it would be a... maybe um, appreciated is not the word, but a... uh, Talis, you can roll a history check. Um, Kylo seems to oof. Um, he ends up closing the ledger. Um, with this, like, clearly, um, unsatisfied look on his face as he says, Tell you what, I can probably arrange to have, uh, the room cleared by transferring, uh, uh, perhaps these people, um, to a different, uh, to a different inn. Uh, I'd have to talk with my buddies to see what I can do, but, uh, perhaps, perhaps I can arrange for something. I just... Can I promise this to you now? Would I it mean, help we're... if I paid for it in advance? <sighs> uh, roll persuasion check, Pontifex. Uh, oh. Talix, as for the name Aradova. Well, Talix, with you having lived uh, in Ellen Arden uh, for a while you have um, you have certainly heard uh, of mentions uh, of an, an Arodova family um, somebody uh, a, a family with no with of noble origins and uh, of uh, sufficient influence that you would have heard the name definitely not talked with anyone of the family or anyone uh, who knows personally the family, but it's more like this kinds of names that, like, everyone has heard. Um, unless Pontifex corrects me, and would he have ever mentioned the family no. to Talix? No, fuck no. <laughs> Alright, yeah. yeah, then <laughs> that would be it. No, I think even whenever he's saying the family name to this person, you can hear him having to, like, chew up the word before he spits it out. He's, like, cringing as he speaks. Yeah, the... Eradova. <laughs> 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 Must be an X. <laughs> One would assume, yeah. <laughs> you know, Pontifex Vastalus Allen, the old dog with the nobles. <laughs> it's probably the, the last, uh, uh, the last people that he has uh, requested them to smile. I don't understand all of this apprehension towards smiling. <laughs> <laughs> all right, can we um, like, Kailu... make it our mission to get Pontifex a wand of smiles by the end of the campaign? <laughs> <laughs> I'm multi-classing into Artificer just for that, don't you worry. <laughs> By any means necessary. Kailu is unable to just accept your offer. Um, you can tell that he's like, he wants to help you guys out. Uh, yeah. And you know you're asking him to kick out other customers to do to right, do you a right. favor. I would never ask um, so <laughs> but he he's yes. like willing to give it a try and just try to like relocate uh, um, people to a different inn. But he can't promise that he that he'll he'll know, he'll get it done. And he doesn't want your payment now. For that. Sure, sure, sure. 
Well, if you are unsuccessful, could you perhaps just uh, let us know via world point and perhaps another inn that would be uh, accepting of us, of our group? I can look around at the other establishments in the city, see if anyone has a free room that can accommodate the, the five of you, all five of you, yes? Okay. Presumably. <clears throat> yeah, we, I mean, we worst case, case two rooms. Yeah. Um, I mean, worst case, two rooms next to each other should do as well, right? Mm -hmm. sure. I, and I don't wish to, you know, drag you all into my business. If you have more important things to do, I totally understand. This is a little bit of a blind side. You might end up in separate rooms, perhaps even in separate inns, but I'll, I'll see what I can do. Uh, if you if you're back in seven days, I can just let you know by then. Sounds good. Uh, sure. Uh, thank you for for whatever it may be. Stay safe on the road. Although, yeah, Brooke with you, so you'll be fine. <laughs> we never do. Oh. <laughs> 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 you stay safe as well, okay? Uh. All right, yeah, he waves you off. You return the keys, uh, the key to your room. Uh, and your when company... When outside of the inn, uh, I would turn to the group. Do you mind if you go to the postal thing without me? I would like to see a friend real quick, just to make sure that he's here still in a week. And... I hate to go by myself, but I can't really bring you, so... Is that fine okay. by you? Fair enough. Uh, yeah. If you're gonna be a minute, maybe you'll meet us at that, uh... At the home of... or the apartment building of, uh, Nando. Okay. Just Do I know for where the, that is? the sake of it, uh, are you currently in possession of, uh, the thing? Yes. Oh yeah, I am. And I'll take it and give it to Talix. Just, you know, um, maybe we should keep it uh, with a larger yeah. group at whatever, yes. You're totally right. Okay. It would be nice if I could make a prop for it so we can, like the book. So it's yeah, always on one of your desks. Or something. An acorn? An acorn? <laughs> <laughs> oh, maybe. Yeah, I'll look into it. Yeah, something. A little tree. Because it's a it's a seed encased in amber, right? Uh, no, it's like just it's, uh, it's like in a metal locket, like a, that's a big, a big ball. Oh, okay, okay. Where, where am I getting amber from? That's that's my. Uh, I have also a leaf of Akanath in, encased in amber. Ah, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. So the leaf, you know, in, in the amber you can see it, but uh, you wouldn't know that there is a seed in the locket. Uh, it just looks like a, a pendant. The kind where you'd okay, put maybe a picture of someone. Yes. Yeah, yeah. You do. Okay. I don't want to make the game. It's just inconspicuous for, for everyone else. Sure. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, this, uh, that is the only thing I can think of. Attacker, uh, you have the book. Uh, Telex, you have the paperweight. <laughs> it's fine by me. All right, so the group is uh, splitting up. Everyone is going to the postal office. And Brooke is off on his own? Sounds like it. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, Pontifex, uh, uh, all, your business at the, at the postal office, which, by the way, already has more junk mail for you um, just the following day, <laughs> um, oh, yeah. is just to write uh, um, about your findings to the one dwarf from Cleon. Um, yeah. And you share, like, all the knowledge that you've been able to just cram together in a letter about the fern? It's like the mystery was uh, about the reproduction, but, you know, there's, like, a lot yeah, yeah, more to elaborate on. All of it, yeah. Mm. Uh, he, he, information in its complete form is much more valuable. So yeah, he'll, he'll give everything that he have, including the, the name of the book and the author. Mm -hmm. Just, like, write it all down. Yeah, he worked on a letter during, like, his shift, probably. Mm -hmm. um, just... Have it all nice and written down and just ready to mail. Also, uh, just to throw this out there, because I don't know if Austin is watching the is watching the stream, but if he is, 
correct me if I'm wrong, it's, this seems like a very pip thing to do. Where if Brook is going off on his own, and no one else can go with him, he might have a little invisible friend tagging along with him, you know? <laughs> Maybe just, <laughs> just to keep an eye on his good buddy boy. <laughs> yeah, okay, um... I, <laughs> I just feel like that's probably something that would happen. I would be disgusting to put words in with uh, mouth, Austin. If Austin's in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Yeah. Uh, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> uh, as for Brooke, uh, um, well, Brooke, there is a um, a store. Oh wait. Oh, yeah. Dennis may not be here. Oh, you're here. Yep, I'm back. Okay. Uh, Brooke, there is a store in uh, Simlielon, um, which is all the way... Where's the shopping? Here we go. Ah, uh, this one. That's cool. Did I... Yeah, I guess I just named it this. Um, <laughs> I'm going to be honest, I'm not sure where your cursor is. Uh, I'm about to just name it, uh, um, but it's this white tower down here. Got it. Um, it's an alchemist's shop and a liquor store in one, and nice. it's called Alchemies and Alcohols. <laughs> uh, and we're good old A and A. Um. You know, they really go inside. It's run by an elderly gnome named uh, Altos. Um, and he, he he knows you. And the, the deal with him is that he's, he's not part uh, of uh, of your group. Uh, but uh, the... Name? Altos? Altos. Okay. Got it. Um, but that's where one of the entrances, one of the inconspicuous uh, <laughs> entrances uh, to to the um, to the hideout uh, is hidden. So you just go in like uh, like any other customer. But there is uh, this other door um, that most people are not allowed past, and um, you just walk through it like it's. Uh <laughs> Uh, almost like you work there, and then through a trapdoor down into an underground building. Um, as you enter, after having not been here for months, uh, the the hideout of the Phantom Guard. Um, boop. Uh, this underground uh, uh, building. It just uh, sprawls beneath the city of Simlielon uh, in every direction. Uh, tunnels leading from one side of the city to the other. Uh, multiple rooms. Uh, some uh, lodgings for people like you to stay in. Others for practicing, training, uh, for research. It's like an entire smaller second town uh, beneath uh, Simlielon itself. And despite its size, it is, for the most part, uh, almost entirely uh, empty. So few people are part of the Phantom Guard to begin with, and uh, even fewer are just currently in here right now um so you have to poke around for a little bit uh to even find uh, anyone at all in the first place uh, and uh, uh when you do your, are you looking just immediately for casimir yeah even when you uh, find someone then you have to need uh, uh, them tell you where casimir was last seen uh, um and uh, as as far as this person knows, it's like on on one side of the hideout that you don't actually have access to, um, where you know how phantoms are. Everyone, uh, uh, it every member has their own secrets, uh, uh, especially the higher ups. Uh, um, and your teacher just has a bit more reach uh, than you do. Um, but you're able to, to make your 
your presence known. Um, you go as far down the tunnels as you actually have permission to, and then there is a little bell outside of a door, um, and you just pick it up and uh, ring it, and you wait. Um, until these uh, these wooden double doors slam open, uh, they're tall enough for for you to be easily able to to walk uh, uh, through them. But uh, uh, the person that's uh, in the uh, in the middle of the of the frame of the doors is so much smaller uh, by comparison. And despite how tiny this halfling is, uh, um, when he takes a step towards you and just gives you this, this hug at your legs. Uh, it is with incredible strength. You have no idea how this person who is less than half your height uh, um, is so much stronger than you. I can lift ways... He can lift you uh, with ease, uh, but that's what makes him your teacher. <clears throat> whoa, whoa, whoa. Let me come down and return the favor, <laughs> and I'll squat down to his hide, and then hug him back. Brooke! Oh, it is so good to see you again! I didn't think you'd be back in Sim Leland this early. Honestly, I didn't think so either, but have you received my letter? Uh, I got it just a few days ago. Are you... Yeah, uh, Are you holding up okay? I'm, I... You haven't seen any more I... of of that? Um, nope, not you're yet. Not, uh, you're not leading him here, are you? I mean, possibly. <laughs> you want me to us. take care of it? Wait, what are, what are we doing talking here? Come on, let's uh, uh, follow me. Let's have a drink at least. Uh, I, I just want to make... All right. Um, I know this is very abrupt, but I told you about the group I'm with currently, right? Mm-hmm. And... We're making our way, apparently, to some dreamatory to the west of Simlilon. I'm not sure if you've heard of that. I'm just happy to hear that you have made friends, Brooke. Ah, uh, never thought that would actually happen. Saw you more <laughs> as a lone wolf kind of guy. Well, I'm a bit surprised myself, not gonna lie. But we're basically about to leave, and I was told by Kailu that you're currently here. We would be back in about a week. Would you still be around? Depends on whether I've already taken down a machine or not. Oh. You're currently working on that job? Why else would I be here? You know, I don't really like the city. True. But, uh, yeah, mm. we're putting together a force. Going to take down that, uh, whatever the hell that is. Uh, we got... Uh, what have you heard of it? Uh, you know, our new job. You know, you sure do want to help us out. Uh, you live in the city, right? Heading west? Yeah, we are. Well, that's exactly where that uh, hellish machine is. Well, Wouldn't it be nice my... to take down a titan like good old days? You and me together. <laughs> Honestly, that doesn't sound too bad, but uh, I do have some other obligations obligations currently with the group I'm with. I've made some promises to them that I need to keep up. Um, well, look at you I... being a responsible adult. Isn't that what we're supposed to do? Isn't that our job? <sighs> so it is, Brooke. So it is. So you haven't heard of the Dreaming Tree, Dreamer Tree? Any chance? Um... The halfling, he pulls back, <clears throat> he has hair that, like, is long enough to reach down to his, uh, to his shoulders. Uh, and he just passes a hand, uh, his fingers through it, pull his, pulls it all the way back out of, his face, out of his face while he's thinking about it. <clears throat> and I can only think of one tree to the west of here that would um, have any significance. One with, uh, what, pink leaves? Yeah. Heard of it. Um, haven't seen it. But then again, mm -hmm. I haven't scouted to the west yet. Hmm. Do you have any, like, the region we're supposed to look for it is quite big. 
we have like any better understandings of where exactly it is. If not, we'll just find it that way. <sighs> Heard a lot of people showing up in the city just to go see that tree. Everyone keeps saying just go west and you'll find it. Um, honestly, the way that people kind of talk about it, it's like... Uh, you know how Ladarians are sometimes. They just don't give you the details and it's more like about you having to figure it out. It is exceptionally annoying. Hmm. Sounds like it. Well, Kaz, I'm really sorry that I can't take a drink with you. But if Not you're even one still right here... now. Come on, I'm parched. Come on, Brook. I mean, when are I going to see you again in uh, in a week? I might be dead in a week. <laughs> All right, a quick drink. Yeah, all right. Um, a small one. <laughs> uh, all right, you get the small one, and I'll get the fur bulk sized one. <laughs> um, so the usual? He doesn't take you... Yes. <laughs> um, he doesn't take you outside of the hideout. Uh, um, but instead, uh, well, Casimir has made sure that the hideout includes, uh, um, you know, in, in the dining area, uh, that their stockpile of uh, alcohol is uh, kept, uh, uh, well, well stocked. Um, also helped uh, by the fact that uh, one of the entrances to the hideout is hidden in a liquor store. Um, which, I mean, you know it's no coincidence. Um... With where the Casimir is, you know, even if you requested for a small drink, he doesn't... Uh, he still gets you, like, as much as he can force you to, to, to have. Um, it's actually just a small drink, because it, <laughs> I already feel bad. <laughs> and it's like, you know, it's early in the morning, uh, but this yeah. is completely on par for what Casimir is like. Uh, um, and... In front of this drink, you're going to just exchange a little bit more information about what both of you have been up to. How much should you tell him about your journey so far? You know, in addition um, to what's in the letter. Well... I would tell him that there's a lot to say, but it's probably not... It's like a story for a longer visit. Mm -hmm. so like, I'm ultimately, not... you, don't told, you don't stay with him for longer than like 10 more minutes. Um, yeah. That's and he, he really tries to make you stay, but... Uh... Well, there's actually one more question. Um, since there is a chance that you won't be here in seven days, uh, have you figured anything out about uh, the parents of this Pip Kid? I got nothing for that yet, Brooke, but uh, okay. I have sent word around. Thank you. I do got something about the werewolves, though. Oh? Yeah, oh. um, just some... I got my own, uh, personal account. Um, I myself actually got to kill one of those, and it was, uh, beyond the boundaries of the peninsula. Oh. Doesn't really match the one you described to me, though. There were no, um... What was it, rubies? Yeah, it was rubies. No, 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 they had nothing of the sort on them. But, uh... Just normal wolves? Well... Normal? No. But, uh... uh this one had, uh... This one had feathers, uh, had little stubby wings. Couldn't really, uh... You know how chickens fly? Like, they don't really fly a lot, but they will leap, uh, and they can just... Get cover some distance. Uh, it was kind of like that. Really yeah. hard to pin down, uh, you know, following following its tracks. But still, um, I got his head around here somewhere. <laughs> did you get like a um, job to do that, or did you just go out and look for it? Um, his, uh, his grin, uh, um, fades, and as he looks at you straight in the eyes, he just says, I can't tell you about that. I I'm sorry, you know, you know how it is. Yeah, yeah, 
It's, it's fine. You know, I would. Okay. Just... Yeah, I know. It's 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 okay. Um, I'm sorry. I, I really need to catch up with the group. I, if you're here in seven days, I'll see you. I'll look for you. There's also a chance, apparently, that we'll be here at the 30th or in 30 days. I'm not sure anymore which of the two it was. For a solstice? Apparently. <laughs> Would be nice to celebrate with you. So... I'll let you know, okay? Yeah, well, I'm already counting on you being here, so... No tixie backsies? I'll try my best. <laughs> and he goes down again and gives them a big hug. Yeah, he'll, he'll climb like standing on one of the chairs uh, um, just to, <laughs> to hug you back. And it, it's just the way he squeezes you. His arms can't even like reach all the way around at your back, but you just feel your shoulders and your arms just almost crushed. Uh, okay. Uh, I need <laughs> to go, Cass, please. Yeah, right, right. All right, I'll let you go. All right. Stay but, safe. Uh, yeah. Don't die. You too, don't die. You. Of course. And see you in a bit. Uh -huh. uh, you want to take a bottle of this? What's it stuff? With me? I mean. Yeah, for the journey. Sure. All right, here you go. And he just like tosses the, the, the open... Uh, um, it's a very big, uh, like the, uh, like twice the size of a normal bottle of wine, and it's not it's not wine. It's a um, it's a kind of ale. Oh, good stuff, good stuff. And he makes his way out to the. Okay. Group. Uh, the rest of you have waited a while in front of the postal office. Uh, um, I know you. It, it's we, at the we point. We said we were gonna move on to the uh, to the apartment to meet him there. Oh, yeah, yeah, the department, that's right. I guess we knew it was going to be a while. Are you waiting in front of it, or are you going to be dealing with that, uh, uh, with that brook? We could probably just deal with it without, so we can get going sooner. Yep. Okay. Here it is. Um, for most of you, the idea of uh, um, a a house that is shared between multiple people is a little strange. Um, but as you begin going up the uh, the spiral staircase uh, um, of uh, you're over here, oh, doesn't matter. Um, of this tower, um, you were told to reach uh, the, the fifth floor and you go up and up and every once in a while there are little windows where you can look outside and see just how far you've come and there is a, um, a very pretty unobstructed view of the lake uh, um, as you begin to climb up the steps and eventually you reach the fifth floor and you just uh, knock on uh, the, the only door that you find here. Um... And that's when the lady that you met uh, yesterday at the at the tavern uh, uh, opens the door, and uh, um, you see this just relief uh, washing over her. Like she wasn't really sure if you were gonna show up, but the moment she sees you, she um, she seems uh, just so genuinely happy. Um, and as she steps aside and invites you in, uh, she says, "Oh, thank you." Thank you so much for coming. Uh, c come on in. Oh, it's my pleasure. I, I sorry, did we, did we get her name before? Nandil. Nandil. Okay. Um. Okay. Uh. Lead the way. Um. The. The woman uh, invites you all inside uh, and uh, uh, closes the door behind you. And she just uh, uh, takes you straight to um, what uh, is uh, um, certainly her and... Uh, oh, wait. Also, this music is gone. Boop. Boop. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> um, to, to what is uh, most certainly her and her husband's uh, bedroom... Um, well, 
the um the sight of a sickly person lying in their own bed you've just seen so many of them Talix uh, ever since you have um awakened to your own powers granted to you by Vakanath herself um, a lot of your job for the church has been exactly this kind of thing uh, heading to, into people's houses people who need uh, uh, help injuries, sicknesses um, it, uh, there was a, a part of your life where this was almost routine um, as you are uh, Approach the bed. I will take a medicine check, please. Well, okay. And yeah, what would you... Um... Uh, well, I guess failing this, I was going to cast uh, Detect Disease as a ritual, and that also allows me to know what he's actually afflicted with. Mm -hmm. uh, do... We can start with a medicine check, I guess. Yeah, you can, you can do a medicine check, and then like if you're unsatisfied, you can... Work on your magic. Twenty-two. Okay. Just uh, as, uh, um, as. When people from Plurna started to travel to Lidaria, um, it quickly became clear that uh, there was uh, there were a lot of issues with people bringing over animals and plants that uh, uh, were going to interfere with the um, with the local nature of Lidaria and other things that have been carried over. Um, most definitely, unwillingly and unknowingly, are certain diseases. Um, it. You've seen people with a rotting cough uh, uh, many times before in Plurna, and despite the name, it's uh, it's not that scary uh, of a disease, uh, and the symptoms aren't so so bad. But for older people like this uh, this elf, uh, is it? Uh, um, it can drain them of energy, and they can burn with a fever high enough to actually become dangerous. Um, it's also just straight up clear to you that this person is, uh, well, just very old. Um, and that, well, that is not something you can cure. But you can get rid of, uh, um, you can lower his fever um, with with ease. Um, normally you'd have, um, you'd have the proper, the appropriate medicines with you. But this is something that uh, your magic can also get rid of really easily. Um, yeah. Is this a highly infectious disease, then? Um, to your knowledge, yes, and it tends to actually be, um, to especially take hold, uh, into elves. Oh, great. Uh, okay, I am going to go ahead and ritual cast, uh, detect disease, and I'm going to be looking at his wife, as well as him. Just... Um, I'm just gonna look up the AD spell real quick. That's that's detect. Uh... Detect poison and disease. First level. I'm gonna cast it as a ritual. Mhm. Mm you can sense the presence and location of poisons, poisonous creatures, and diseases within 30 feet of you. You also so identify the like, kind. Incense and burning them and also saying prayers while holding my uh, my preserved piece of Akhenath. So it's going to be pretty obvious what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. But I I just take it as a given at this point that it's fine. While Talix is doing this, uh, um, Nandil will be bringing him water and then she just begins to like try to take care of the rest uh, of the guests uh, the rest of the group offering uh, mm -hmm. uh freshly baked bread uh, water for everyone uh if they want to sit around in the living room she'll just like have, mm? have you come to ladoria recently um we've only been here for a couple of months 
And uh, when did he start showing symptoms? Uh, about a week ago. Hmm. He's been uh, progressively getting worse. Are the two of you very, very social? You live happy social lives. Well, yeah, we, we have a little, um, we sell our, our bread in the market every day. I see. We have our own little stall. Alright, thank you. I'm, uh, as I finish here, I'm gonna need to look, look at you for just a bit, and... I'm just gonna make sure that you're not at any immediate risk of getting sick yourself. Uh, can you roll a persuasion check? Sure. Uh, inspiration, please. Make that a 14. Okay. Uh, what is this called? Dubspiration. Yeah, dubspiration. <laughs> Your bias source. Oh, yeah, okay, that's why. I, could, I yeah. couldn't remember. Um, Alright, so she seems a little confused by this as, you know, she just openly says, ah, I, I feel fine. Uh, but if you think it's necessary, I... I suppose that's... that's okay. Just trying to be careful. Um, Talix, your... um, your spell is... Uh, um, by, by the time... Uh, at the end of your casting, you confirm uh, uh, your suspicions that... Uh, um, this man is indeed uh, infected with uh, the rotting cough, and you can also detect that uh, um, that the woman too has uh, shows signs of it currently growing within her, um, not quite having taken hold yet. Uh, she doesn't seem to be feeling it, like she didn't seem to be to be lying about it. But you can tell that uh, uh, it's only a matter of a few days before she also uh, will develop a fever. And I don't. Like, anything that I know to treat this is not going to cure it. It's just going to, like, lessen symptoms. Aside um, from my magic. Everything non-magical, yeah, will help with the symptoms, which is generally sufficient. This is the kind of thing where most people will just, like... Normally, they'll just let it to run its course. Uh, and it's just that, like, you know, the older, more frail you are, the, um, the harder it is for that to actually uh, go through. I'm using both of my second level spell slots. Let's go. On him and on her? Yep. Okay, which spell is this? Uh, lesser Restoration. The rest of you are hanging out in the... in the living room? I'm hanging out on the street. Yeah, besides... Oh, well, yeah, Austin is not here, too, but Tekka. Uh, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> not really much that can be done. Okay, yeah, I was just wondering me. if, like, you were you were gonna even go in in the first place, but... I didn't hear uh, you say otherwise. I'm inside, but... Touch a creature and can end one disease or one condition, afflicting it. Uh, okay, very straightforward. It takes an action to cast. Um, yep. I will let her know that, uh, you know, I detected the presence of the disease within her. And kind of try to gently explain, like, it can be a problem for older folks, so just trying mm -hmm. to be cautious. Mm -hmm. Um, 
yeah, just going off of your previous role, like the uh, she, she seems to to just uh, <clears> to <throat> to believe uh, um, that uh, you um, you know what you're doing, um, and she will uh, she will allow you to do everything that uh, um, everything that you you deem to be necessary. Uh, you begin with uh, her husband. Yes. Um, what is it? Is just like you just touch him on a shoulder? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, I imagine it would be sort of similar to other healing spells I've described, which I think is more or less just you know, lay on a hand, say a prayer, and it's just there might be a faint like glow or shimmer. Maybe some glittering, but I don't think there's anything too substantial that you can actually see. Uh, maybe it just feels like a, a warmth in his chest. Okay. Um, as part of your previous casting, you could tell that this man um, is, is dehydrated, um, hasn't been able to eat food for a while and even as you feel the um your magic rid the disease from his body um you know he won't regain his energy for a while but you know for a fact that uh, um the rotting cough is is gone you can even see his cheeks just regaining a little bit of color yeah, and I'll, um i'll try hmm? to like you know get a get a wet rag and help get him some water like a wet a bowl of water and a rag, and uh, if I do happen to have any herbs that could help reduce fever and stuff, help him with that, and then maybe kind of explain to the wife the things mm -hmm. that need to be done. Yeah, uh, over the over the course of the next half hour, you just uh, um, you do everything you can to to um, help this person recover as quickly as uh, he'll be able to, and to. Um, just ease his fever and the uh, um, suffering he's currently going through um, until you turn your attention to, to his wife uh, and similarly ask him for permission to to touch her. Um, right. You will also use a, spence, uh, a spell slot on her? Yeah. Okay. I cast the spell on her and then just kind of you know, I don't need to do anything with her but I'll just mm -hmm. tell her how to kind of help take care of her husband for a bit. Yeah, you leave your instructions on like when uh, uh, to, to, to give him water, uh, the foods that perhaps she should avoid at first giving him. Uh, um, again, this is, uh, this is almost routine for you. Uh, you've mm -hmm. seen this plenty of times. You're a little worried that uh, um, if, well, this is exactly the kind of disease that could easily just run rampant in an elven city. Uh, but right. uh, you know, with a bit of luck you have uh, uh, reduced uh, how far it will spread in the future. Um, by the end of this, uh, um, as uh, the as her husband, uh, uh, as she tells you, his name is Nuvian, uh, um, has regained con consciousness and a little bit of like energy that they they've been exchanging some words, and she has been explaining uh, um, that you've been. Helping him. Uh, yes, that's how it's spelled. Um, oh, 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 oh. Here we go. Uh, by the end of it, uh, um, she is uh, grateful to you. Um, and she'll be asking uh, um, how much your services uh, um, were worth. Um... Well, uh, nothing outside your means. Uh, really, it's not even necessary. N nonsense. Um, let me see what I can put together. Um, and she'll eventually produce just a little pouch. Ah, uh, you can hear the the sound of the coins inside. Uh, um, as she just pushes it into into your hands. Hmm. The rest of you have basically had a second breakfast by now. 
Um. Okay. Well, it's appreciated, and uh, just take care of yourselves. And uh, well, if you need any help in the future, I'll be in that same inn for <laughs> foreseeable future. Uh, hopefully, we will not. But thank you, and uh, we will always have a loaf of bread for you. Oh, much appreciated. All right. Goodbye. Thank you again. Um, and as you leave uh, her. Uh, her house and uh, you go all the way back down the spiral staircase uh, um, down outside uh, um, you'll be reunited with Brooke Ooh. right as he's arriving okay business settled same here more or less although is, is, uh, is Matt back Hmm. Dogs. No. I was going to. I was going to ask him. I was going to ask Brooke if he knew. Is there like a certain established leadership in this city? Like, who who does, who handles city planning and stuff like that? Um, I can tell you who the leader of Simliadon is. Br uh, oh, Brooke, you can tell me and I can tell Brooke was here. <laughs> yeah. Um you would know the name uh of yeah pretty much the leader of Simlielon which is Morthelian Yumeren. Morthelian Yumeren. Tell him. Um the leader. as as yeah, it's always the case with uh, uh with Elven cities uh, um it's generally the very very old elves uh, who are in charge uh, of uh, of uh, cities uh, and uh, um this guy is known for being over 600 years old oh they might have known him but <laughs> uh well if we happen to, if you happen to know any way of getting a line of communication to him we, we might want to let him know that we uh You know, we saw instances of rotting cough in the colony. That can be especially hard for elves. Uh, would I know where to report this? Look out for. Um. Yeah. Um. Uh, would know the we're like there, there's like a town hall it's one of the flying towers um and that will be the place to report this kind of thing well you I probably won't be I speaking can... directly with uh uh Morthelian, but that would be the place to go yeah I don't all right we write can... a letter and drop it off and then go <laughs> yeah sure thing um and Talix, uh, um, as, as as you guys are like headed headed to uh, take care of his final business before leaving the colony, um, as you eventually look at the little pouch that's been given to you, uh, you find you find ten silver pieces and uh, two nondescript metal keys. Okay. And um, as you guys begin to leave Simlielon from the west, not following a road, uh, just heading um, straight to the west, um, we're going to end the session there. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> All right. Hi. Yep. Running. Uh, what did you say? You cut out. I said Aaron running. Aaron running. 
Aaron. Yay! Fetch quests. Will you all be here for the session next Sunday? I can. Should be, yeah. Yep. One, two. Woo. Who haven't I heard? Matt, will you be here next week? Yeah, I'll be here next week. Oh, okay, okay. Um, okay. Though, a reminder, I will not be here on the 23rd, the following week. Okay. Thank Sorry. you for the reminder. Um, all right, then. Tim Leolon. Tim Leolon. Cool city. Touch and go. The coolest city. Any city that doesn't have floating buildings isn't really a city. Yeah, what's the point uh, of what building you a city? It's call cities. I mean, it's just so much more efficient to take advantage of all that vertical space, you know? There's a lot of just empty, unused space above mm. all these hillbilly places that the, the yokels call cities. <laughs> I mean, at what point does it Floating cross building. over into dragon territory, though? When they deem it to be so. I just don't think they want people flying, but buildings flying is probably fine. <laughs> what are they gonna do? Lecture the building? Uh, it's so the thing about dragons. <laughs> <laughs> Lecturing's not what they do. Specifically known to like raise the cities. <laughs> to murder. <laughs> All right. Thank you for coming. Uh, yeah, thanks for thanks for running it. Thanks for playing, everyone. I'll yeah. be seeing if, you in a week. I don't know if we're still live on stream, but if we are, thanks for anyone who's watching. We are. going to say goodbye to the stream. Of viewers, actually. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Ah, Bye, Bye, viewers. Bye. Comment, subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> like, comment, subscribe, Twitch, all mm -hmm. that good stuff.